Welcome to the Stutler Bowl. Don Martin along with my partner here tonight, Eric Christensen, as we bring you yet another edition of the Arvada West Broadcast Network. Is that what you call this, sure. Eric? I mean, we have to. The boys out in the middle of the field right now as we come together with the captains for the coin toss. The Arvada West Wildcats and their traveling white and purple and the dark blue and white. They'll also have some green trim on that. The Overland Trailblazers at 2-2. Two and two. You can see Duran, Pyatt, Craco, and Palmer up front. Flora, as well as the quarterback, Derek Cavalieri, in the back at the hash marks, 50-yard line, as we get set to get this one underway. About two minutes away from the kickoff, and, and I'll tell you right now, the Arvetta West Wildcats from the Jefferson County League with their 4-0 record, ranked number one, Eric, against this Overland Trailblazer team that's 2-2, two and two, and realistically speaking, could be 3-1 and one as they uh, lose a game last week to the Cherry Creek Bruins right here on the Stutler Bowl carpet, as a matter of fact, and they lose that game 13-7 had an opportunity earlier in the year to see Cherry Creek take on Bear Creek, and Cherry Creek just demolished a pretty darn good Bear Creek team. You see there the Overland Trailblazers, they win the toss, and they will uh, elect to receive the Arvada West Wildcats. They will kick from left to right on your screen as we get this one set to get underway. But the Overland Trailblazers, led by Tony Manfredi, not their quarterback, Anthony Manfredi Jr., but Tony, the coach, a pretty darn good defensive team and always have been. Tonight we have to see if they can put some offense together against, once again, a very good defensive team, probably the best defensive team I've seen in a few years calling our Veta West games. And, and uh, you know, you have to see how they can come together tonight on the carpet and see if Rudy Andrade can pull this team together. What really intrigues me about tonight's game, Don, is I talked to uh, Coach Manfredi earlier in the week, and I asked him, Coach, what's the strength of your team? And he said, I really like the way my defense is playing. Mm -hmm. Case in point, they held Cherry Creek to 13 points. We both saw Cherry Creek put up, I think, in the 30s against Bear Creek. So his defense is playing well, and that's the strength of this football team. So it's going to be strength on strength because we all know the strength of this Arvada West team is an offense, especially with guys like Duran and Pyatt each averaging like 15, 20 yards every time they touch the football. So when Arvada West has the football, it's going to be uh, – an interesting matchup. It's going to be strength on strength. And when you got a matchup like that, you know, hey, let's get it on. No doubt about it. We're going to get it on in a matter of seconds. But first, we're going to honor America with the singing of our national anthem. We are ready for some football, I guarantee you that. Don Martin, Eric Christensen having more fun than two grown folks should be allowed to have on a wonderful Thursday night as we bring you this broadcast from the Stutler Bowl as we get set to see the number one team in the state, not only offensively, but also a pretty darn good defensive team. And we'll give the starting lineups to you. Uh, the Arvada West Wildcats will be on defense to start this out, and we'll go from left to right across the front. Robert Wunderlich. At 6'4", 210-pound senior, Robert Morales on the inside. Morales is a 5'11", 235-pound junior. Joe Knight, the right tackle, 5'10", 200-pound junior. And Chris Chavez make up the front four. Chris comes in, a junior at 195 pounds at 6'2". And here come the Wildcats. The linebackers include number five, Jeff Flora, 6'2", 220-pound senior in the middle. Number 50, Ryan Palmer. Does a little bit of everything, 6'1", 240-pound junior. And to his left side, you'll find number 51, Jaden McNeely, a 6'1", 215-pound junior. In the backfield, some speed back here at cornerback. 
Number two, Mike Dern also plays tailback, 5'9", 180 pound junior. The free safety, number three, Brad Pyatt, the man, 6'1", 185, a senior. The strong safety, Tony Vias, 6'1", 185 pound senior, wearing number 21. And Jesse Brannon rounds out that defensive backfield, wearing number 24, 5'10", 160 pound senior. On offense for the Overland Trailblazers, their quarterback, the son of the head coach, Number three, Anthony Manfredi, 6'1", 195-pound senior, third-year starter. His tailback behind him, number 26, Julius Hutchings, 5'6", 170-pound senior. Also back in the backfield, number one, Rick Manastra, 5'8", 160-pound junior. Wideouts include number 80, Leslie Richardson, number 22, Justin Hamilton. And up front, Knudsen, Niebauer, Garcia, Aragon, Hickson, and Drafen. We are set to kick this one off. Back to receive for the Trailblazers will be Nick Manastra as well as Brandon Dandridge. And Manastra, is a, he has a little bit of speed to America. We're going to see if he can get off. Once again, he's off to the right side. Off to the left side deep will be Dandridge. Kicking off once again for your Arvada West Wildcats is Eric Helgeson. He puts a foot into it, and guess what? That ball lands about this side of Colorado Springs as it completely leaves the building. And we're going to pull this thing out to the 20 on the touchback. 12 minutes up on that clock, and let's get this one underway. I think Eric could uh, get a scholarship just based on kicking it out of the end zone. He kicks about 50, 60 percent of his kickoffs out of the end zone. You don't see guys in college doing that. Uh, he ought to start sending some tapes out. Well, he's a big 200-pound son of a gun. Still goes straight on. <laughs> Split backs in the backfield. Once again, Hutchings and Manastra. Manastra off to the left. Hutchings off to the right. Go. Here we go. little pitch back on the option. Fine r- Hutchings and he gets to the outside, just barely crossing the 25 yard or 21 yard line. Excuse me, taken out by Dern and Palmer. It's going to be a second down and about nine and a half. Arvada West defense really going to the football well there. The few guys got cut down initially, but Duran was able to come up from his defensive back spot and to hit Hutchings low and keep him from getting a big game. You're going to see the split backs. You're going to see the veer option. Saw a little bit of both there. You got a couple of wide outs, one off to each side. Hamilton at the top of your screen. Richardson at the lower end. Split backs in the backfield once again. Hutchings and Manastra. Manastra moves. And we're going to get a five-yard penalty, move this thing back a few feet and see exactly what happens. It's going to be a second down all over again. And instead of a second and nine, now you have a second and 14. A team that does not pass the ball a lot. So I don't know that the, uh, the Overland Trailblazers just want to get into a passing match with this Arvetta West Wildcat team. You know, we talked about our Battle West offense earlier in the pregame. Their defense really, as you said, Don, has been playing well. It looks like this one's going to go against our Battle West. Whoa! Back in the backfield moved for Overland, but apparently initial movement made by the defense. I didn't see that. Now, what happened was he came forward. They said he was allowed to go in motion, even though he stopped. He did bring a defensive lineman across, which touched shoulder pads, and they're going to go five yards the other way. Second down and a short four now for the Manfredi-led Trailblazers. He's under center, split backs in the backfield. Goes with the option once again, gives it to the first man through, and that's Hutchings. He picks up a quick couple of yards as he's piled up on the inside. First one to hit him was Joe Knight. That's five yards for Hutchings and a first down for Overland, so a good start for the Trailblazers. Offensively last week, they sputtered a little bit, only put in seven on the board against Cherry Creek. Uh, Coach Manfredi, I'm sure, likes starting this game off, moving those chains. <laughs> first and 10, 31-yard line of the Trailblazers. They have the ball, 10:43 and counting on the clock in the first period. Coming to you from the Stutler Bowl, dropping back for the first pass of the night. Left-hander lets it go, overthrowing the outstretched hands of his tight end, Jeff Knutson. Knutson wide open. He got behind Dern that time and, and in front of the defensive safety, and he was open for the pass, and unfortunately for Manfredi, couldn't get it there. He found the soft spot in the zone between the linebackers and the defensive backs. Unfortunately, Manfredi just overthrew him by a couple yards. I kind of questioned Knutson's effort on that one. He, I think he heard <laughs> footsteps. He kind of stuck that arm out to catch it, but didn't really give it the old college effort. Uh, he heard footsteps from those safety. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, he heard something. <laughs> Ranson in for the free safety spot for the Arvada West Wildcats. Here we go, Manfredi with the dump off. Finds his back in the backfield. Comes out to the 36-yard line, and Nick Manastra comes up with the first big gain on a pass anyway in this ball game with 10:23 and counting on the clock. Nice defense there by Jesse Brandon to keep Manastra to about a four-yard gain. Nice block on the play though by uh, 
Brett Hickson of Oberlin. He was able to uh, spring Manastra at the line of scrimmage and help him pick up those extra four yards. You're going to see this Wildcat team break down into a 4-3. A lot of times they're going to fill those gaps and bring you a lot of multiples uh, looks anyway here this evening against an Overland team. Second down, or third down and five, excuse me. Ball now at the 37-yard line. Going with the option, picking it back quickly to Monastra. Monastra to the right side, gets to the outside. He was picked up by Cisneros, but not until after he had the first down out to the 43-yard line. Second consecutive first down for Oberlin, and right now it looks like uh, Arvada West just not able to pursue and string out the option like I'm sure they'd like to. Manastra was able to make a little juke inside and then was able to fake the defender, make him commit to the inside, was able to get to the outside there to pick up the first down. Richardson goes to the top of your screen. Down to the lower end, Justin Hamilton. Split backs in the backfield, Manastra and Richardson. Your quarterback, Anthony Manfredi. First down and 10, 43-yard line of the Trailblazers. No score. Quick shot right up the middle. Manastra moves. And he gets almost five yards, if not six, on that push. Nice push up front by the right side of the offensive line. Two carries, 11 yards for Nick Monaster. He's a, a senior on this Overland, or actually a junior on this Overland football team. He's one of these players who uh, is going to be back for his senior year next year, making a good uh, name for himself here early on. A couple of wide outs. You have Knutson coming out from the tight end slot, going into the slot. Spread out wide with him at the lower end of the screen is Hamilton. Up top, you'll find Richardson. Manfredi changing the play at the line. Turns around, goes with the option, gives it straight through to the first guy again, and that's Monastra. Picks up maybe two yards on that play. Nothing going there. The middle got closed up very quickly. Leading the charge was Joe Knight, a 5'10", 200-pound junior for our Battle West. 33 tackles this year from his defensive tackle spot. This guy's been playing some good football. You saw it right there holding Monastra to a one-yard game. Manfredi gets the play. Third down and four. 49-yard line of the Trailblazers, so they gave him one on the last carry. A wide out off to each side. Hamilton to the lower end of the screen. Richardson to the top. Don Martin along with Eric Christensen, the Arvada West Network, and people jumping all over the place, but the tailback allowed to move, and they kind of got the Arvada West Wildcats screwed up there for a second. Duren picks up Hutchings as he gets his first big carry of the evening. He's going to break the plane of the 50 for the Arvada West Wildcats and get it down to the Wildcat 40-yard line, and now the Overland Trailblazers offense getting a little confidence as they continue to move this ball on the ground. You know, and what they're doing, Don, is they're keeping the ball out of the hands of Cavalieri, Pyatt, and During. This is probably the textbook way Coach Manfredi would have drawn out these first three series. We can have long, sustained drives and keep the Arvada West offense on the sidelines. We're doing pretty good, and that's what they're doing. Hutchings and Monastra in the backfield once again. Split backs, dropping back. Somebody moved on the offensive line. Timing pattern. Out. Are we going to get a flag? No. Both folks turned around. Duran did turn around. This flag is for somebody jumping at the beginning uh, of the play. Let's see what they call. It looked to me like there was movement in the Overland backfield. It looked like both backs moved to the fourth snap. Well, if we had a replay, we would show you not only did both of them move, but the right side of the line also moved. Might have been the cadence by Manfredi. Manfredi starts pulling away pretty quick, and he did get that ball up. I mean, that left-handed timing pattern looked like a pretty pass. Unfortunately for him, he's going up against the speed of Mike Duran. Duran resting right up underneath it in front of Leslie Richardson. And when you've got a guy like Duran with that kind of speed, you just can't let the ball hang in the air that long because he'll be able to make up a lot of ground with his speed. Push it back five yards, first and 15. Richardson at the lower end of the screen. Hamilton goes to the top. Here we go with the option. Straight into the hole is Hutchings. Doesn't quite get back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be a second down and almost 12 of the, as they place this ball in between the 41 and 42 yard line of the Wildcats. Ryan Palmer making the play there. He may not get credit with the tackle, but he was the one who hit Hutchins in the backfield. Hutchins stumbled toward the line of scrimmage, and a few of Palmer's defensive mates finished him off, but Ryan Palmer making the play that time with some good aggressive penetration. Couple wideouts off to the right side. Coming down on the seven minute mark of the first period. No score yet. First possession of the night for either squad, and the Overland Trailblazers have controlled this football. Single back in the backfield is Hutchings. They're going to give it to him. Oh, and he was nailed. The hammer came down, and the hammer's name is Ryan Palmer, 6'1", 240-pound junior. Eighth in tackles last year in the state. This year he's up there again, 29 tackles, 
17 assists coming into this game, and he showed you why. Fourth in the state in tackle. John said 46 to buy the unassisted and assisted, but that was the same exact play he missed on the previous time. You know what's impressive about that? He was eighth as a sophomore in tackles in the state. So far this year as a junior, he's fourth. Third down and a long 10. A couple of wide outs to the lower end of your screen. The single wide out at the top is Hamilton. Here we go. Back is Manfredi. Gets happy feet. Takes it up the middle. Can he get enough for the first down? Yes, still on his feet. 25, 20. Inside the 20. Taken down at the 24-yard line by Jesse Brannon. And now make that, excuse me, the 15, 19-yard line is where they're going to finally call him out. That's a backbreaker because A. West played great defense in that series. They got the two leads starting off, and Palmer made two very nice plays. They had a lot of pressure on Manfredi, but you've got to contain a quarterback like Manfredi in the pocket. Pressure's not good enough. This is the kid, as you just saw, has the wheels. He was able to do some damage against that A. West defense. Four consecutive first down. First down and 10. They're going to place it officially now at the 18-yard line. A couple of wideouts off to the lower end of your screen. In the slot, you have Manastra. Coming in motion was Hamilton. Somebody moved on that line, and they're going to bring him back a few feet and see if they can do this all over again. Man, Freddie shows you, I mean, he is an option quarterback. He runs the beer very well, and they're going to call this five-yard penalty on encroachment on the Arvada West Wildcats. Move that ball five yards closer. Break the plane of the 15 now, Eric. Down to the 13-yard line. Mm. First down and five, 13-yard line of the Arvetta West Wildcats. Richardson at the lower end of your screen. Pitch it back, go opposite field, right side, around the end, showing some speed as Hutchings as he breaks the 10, and they're going to officially mark him down at the six-yard line. A little speed there shown by Julius Hutchings, the 5'6", 170-pound senior. He was able to get to the outside. Robert Wunderlich had some penetration, but the big fella just not quite quick enough to contain Hutchings. He rushes for yet another Overland first down. That's their fifth. Hutchings having a pretty good first down. 29 yards. You alluded to it a moment ago about the clock ticking down. We're coming down to the five-and-a-half-minute mark of the first period. The Arvada West offense, one of the top offenses in the state of Colorado, yet to touch the football. Manfredi lines them up, split backs in the backfield. Manastra and Richardson. No, excuse me, Hutchings. Turn around, hand this ball off to Manastra, into the hole. Comes off tackle on the right side. Push it inside the five. They're going to mark him down at the three-yard line. It's going to be a second down and goal at the Arvada West three-yard line. It's funny, whenever Manastra touches the ball, I kind of, in my mind, feel that he's a team level back. He's only 5'8", 160 pounds. And I'm 5'8", 160 pounds. <laughs> in this in this beer offense, they're not running a fullback. They're running double double tailbacks. There's no doubt about it because I'm with you. You can't be. I was born at 170 pounds. You cannot be a fullback. Knutson goes in motion, flipping to the outside. Manfredi ties it up, falls on the turf. Pick it up, running it in is Manastra. Does he score? Yes, indeed. Touchdown. And you talk about... Being better to be lucky than good. That's exactly what happened as Anthony Manfredi with his left hand cupping that football, hanging it out there, knocked out of his hand. I thought by Flora. The ball hits the turf, takes a nice trailblazer bounce, picking it up, right place, right time. Nick Manastra and the first six points of the night belong to the Overland Trailblazers. I mean, I hate to beat a dead horse, but 440 left here in the first quarter. Arvada West is going to get the football with only about four and a half minutes left. A perfect drive for the Trailblazers. Uh, they tried to pass it, kept it on the ground, ran a lot of clock. If they can continue to do that, great chance. Flags flying all over the place like a popcorn popping machine as uh, Ben Freddy puts the ball down. Paul Kramer knocks it through with enough to spare. Let's see what happens. Somebody moved a little too soon, so they're going to have to move this ball back and try it all over again. So they're kicking that ball from the four-yard line. They're going to push this thing back and hike it this time from the nine and see exactly what they can do with it. This man, Freddie, told me uh, his team uh, respected the event. They respected the speed and talent of a number of the players on the Wildcat team, but he also said this team would have backed down, they wouldn't be intimidated, and they would challenge our battle west. Well, I think the challenge has been served here in the first quarter. And that's typical Tony, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Tony is a good man, there's no doubt about it. 
Ball's put into the ball as Manfredi Jr. puts it down, up and through, and we have a 7-0 ball game. And right now, the Arvada West Wildcat offense wants to get a shot at this thing. Uh, the, the interesting chess piece now that has to see if we get it played out, will Tony Manfredi have his kicker kick the ball off? Is he going to squib it, or is he going to send it back to Durner Pyatt? <laughs> I, I mean, to me, legitimately speaking, and it has been that way for a couple of years now, Pyatt touches the ball, and every time he touches it, he has a legitimate chance of scoring with that football. I think Durner's the same way. Sure. Durin, I think, has six touchdowns on the year. Pyatt's got five. That's 11 between the two of them. Yep. We're only four games into the 98 season. It really, when I when we were up watching that Fort Collins game, I mean, Pyatt and Durin literally made Fort Collins look like a team that was running in mud. Oh, there's I've no doubt. I've never seen such a speed differential between... And the sad part about that... I wonder if they ever got out of that. I mean, you, you get so shell shocked. I wonder if you ever recovered. You see those four Collins beat someone the other week like 16, 16, 16. Really? Uh -huh. Now so that's they're, impressive. They're, I mean, they're not a bad team, and they look like a junior high team going against the varsity. That's impressive. But as you alluded to earlier, as we get ready to kick this one off, doing the honors will be Kramer. Puts his foot into it, so he's just going to pooch this thing up in the air. Gets it up, take it down, 25-yard line, cross the 30. Out to the 34-yard line, bringing that football back was Tony Vias, and we're going to set this thing up and bring out Cavallari and company. Cavallari, Duran, Craco, Pyatt, and Craighead make up your possession, folks. Bernhorn, Jones, Fowler, Shepard, Seek, as well as Helgeson make up the horses up front. Let's see what this Arvada West offense can do. 434 and counting in the first period. Don Martin, Eric, Eric Christensen with you on the Arvada West Wildcat Station. First quarter, 7-0, advantage Trailblazers. Ball now comfortably at the 34-yard line of the Trailblazers. Pyatt comes in motion from left to right. Turn around, drop it straight back. Finds in the flat, Craco in and out of the hands. Couldn't go anywhere with it. Cavallari wanted him. He was there. Defense was on him as well. And uh, once again, Craco, if he would have been able to get away from Davis, had he caught that ball, he was down the sideline. The one thing I've noticed about this Arvada West offense in the last game I saw was the Wheat Ridge game is they struggled to really get their continuity and their timing down. They hit on a number of big plays, but they didn't have very many long, sustained drives. I'm sure that's one of Dave Logan's concerns, and in a game like this where the Gopher was able to milk the clock, they aren't going to be able to have what this is. High formation set, second down and ten. Paul Dino checks in, goes to the left side of your screen, top of the screen. Duran's going to go his direction. Can he get around the corner? Just for a couple of yards, knocked out of bounds by Surichento. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I don't want to butcher anybody's name, but it is Surichento. Is that correct, sir? So. Well, come on, you're the English major. Help me out a little bit here. I Paul. <laughs> <in English. laughs> Craig Head brings the play in. Paul Dino comes out. Craig Head and Paul Dino will be bringing it in. And it's Micah. Micah Paul Dino, as a matter of fact. Craig Head lines up, spread wide to the right. In the slot. Beyond him is Pyatt. Up at the top of the screen, you have your split formation. Your deuce formation. A couple wideouts off to each side. Dern goes up top as well. Turn around, fake. Here we go in the flat. Find Craighead. Craighead wrapped up immediately at the 40-yard line as he pulls that ball down. Dandridge all over him, the 5'9", 150-pound junior. One thing you will see from Overland is a lot of speed. That was a third down and eight. Now the offense is going to have to come off, give the football up as they punt this thing away. So maybe the first time all year Arvada West might be matched up with a team that can attempt to match them speed for speed. Well, man, Freddie does have speed, and this ball's going to be hiked over Duran's head, and here comes the speed. He's got to wrap it up, and this ball will be turned over at the 16-yard line as the ball was snapped three feet over the head of Duran. Well, that's just a mistake, man. You can't make it a game like this. You don't want to give a team, an unranked team like Overland, any momentum. Overland takes the first kickoff, 80 yards for a touchdown. They stop Arvada West three plays and out. Then Arvada West keeps himself in the foot with the four snap. This is the perfect script for Tony Mitchell. Well, Rudy Andrade's defense has to come alive right now because this is where men are made, all right? I mean, you're going to find out exactly what you're made out of here tonight as you give this man Freddie led offense a first and ten at the Arvada West 16-yard line on the turnover. Single wide out off to the left side is Richardson. Split backs in the backfield. Manastra and Hutchings. The quarterback is Anthony Manfredi. Turns around, goes straight into the into the hole with the ball, handing it off to Dandridge in the game for the first time. 
showed a little juke move as he gets it down to the 11-yard line. Now, Overland true to their uh, form already this year. Four guys have already carried the ball with still in the first quarter. 3.30 remaining. Right now, this unranked Overland team is uh, giving our Battle West all they can handle and maybe a bit more. And that's the correction that I need to make. It is Dandridge and Hutchings in the backfield, split backs. Single wide out off to the right side. Turn around. Here we go. Oh, what was that? Uh, Delayed handoff as Dandridge takes it in from the 11-yard line directly over left tackle. They line two tight ends. Well, a tight end and a wide out just about a yard outside of the left tackle, leaving a hole, miscommunication on the defense, and Dandridge on the delay handoff blew through there. It almost looked like a mistake for a second by Manfredi as he stopped and went into slow motion. I wonder, Don, I'm noticing our Battle West defense doing a lot of moving and adjusting right before the ball is snapped. I think in efforts to confuse the Overland offense, I wonder if they're getting out of position. And that was a huge hole. I think what Overland did is they found the seed in the adjustment the Battle West defense made, and he had a new touchdown. And we just have had our third penalty for offsides on the offense. The defense has had two. Uh, for our Battle West, but that's the third penalty on this Manfredi-led offense that has moved that ball back five yards for a legal procedure. You have to talk to your, you have to talk to your folks about that. 3:10 left in the first period, and a shocker right now from the Stutler Bowl as Manfredi takes the snap. He's going to place it down. Kramer puts his foot into it. It's up and definitely good. And that was good from about 30 yards out. And this Trailblazer team has come to play, and now. This Arvada West offense has to get on track. You know, John, any time a team is ranked number one in the state or defending the team or the odds on favor like Arvada West is, once or twice during the course of the season, you're going to run into a bug. Oh, yeah. You mentioned it's time for the men to step up and to find out what they're made of, and that's exactly what Arvada West is faced with right now. They were able to have the comeback win over the one of the had Millen ranked higher than A-West. Now it's a team who isn't considered to be in the same class as our Battle West, really giving them a gut check. And it's going to be interesting to see how these guys react. They won the state title last year after losing a couple games early on. This is a team that really um, takes uh, takes on their coach's persona. It's going to be interesting to see how they react. To this. Kramer with the pooch kick again. This ball's going to come down. And, oh, it's going to be a turnover again! Running straight down underneath the ball and picking it up at the 29-yard line. Our Battle West, the coaching staff, has to be beside themselves right now as Justin Hamilton ran under that football and picked it up. It looked like Franco and Vesa were a little confused as to who could field the short punt. And that's something that really is inexcusable because with guys like Hyatt and Duran back there, I'm sure they've prepared for the fact that the team isn't going to want to kick the ball to those guys and they're going to short kick it. Just confusion on the kick return team and it's results in another offensive possession for Overland. The Trailblazers have run 16 offensive plays in this game. Uh, our Battle West, three. Hamilton goes out wide right. Off to the left side is Richardson. Manastra and Richard, excuse me, Mer it is not Manastra. It is Hutchings back there alongside Dandridge. Keeping the ball, man. Freddie turns it up the field. As a quarterback keeper all the way as he crosses the 25 inside the 20 of the Wildcats and down to the 19. Almost enough for the first down. They may have to measure. They, it, they're going to go ahead and just give it to them. Whoa. What is going on here? Well, that time, man, Freddie faked the handoff to his running back, Flora, the Arvada West linebacker, bit. That allowed man, Freddie to get to the seam on the outside. Flora was able to recover and make the tackle, but not until man, Freddie picked up the first down. Manastra back in. Hutchings, his tailback teammate in the backfield. A couple wideouts off to each side. Give this one off to Hutchings just over the right side. Finally upended once he crosses it by Duran and Brannon. Let's give some credit to guys like Nate Nybauer, Tobias Garcia, Victor Aragon, Brett Hickson, and Eric Grafen. They're really taking over this ball game, giving the Overland Trailblazers backfield a lot of room to run. These guys haven't made spectacular runs. They've just taken what they've been given. That's five, six yards a pop. Two special teams turnovers is what has happened so far here tonight in the first period. Inside, the, well, coming down on the two-minute mark of the first period. We have a 14-0 ball game. Ball down on the Arvada West 9-yard, or excuse me, 14-yard line. Pitches straight back. Big defensive play. Palmer makes it. Manastra gets the pitch from Manfredi. 
finally gets thrown for a loss. Two big hits so far tonight in the first period by the Arvada West defense, both of them coming from Palmer. And that's what you're going to have to do. Push that ball beyond the 15 out to the 17 now and make it a third down and seven. And this is a huge third down for this defense. They've been on the field the entire first period. Yeah, and, and we've mentioned it time and time again. I mean, as long as the Overland offense is out there, that means guys like Hyatt and Durin, the playmakers on offense and special teams, aren't making a difference in this football game. Couple wideouts off to the right side, one off to the left. Single back in the backfield is Hutchings. Manastra goes in motion from right to left. Dropping state, straight back is man Freddy. Here comes the pressure. He gets rid of it, finds Hutchings. Can they tie him up? You have to wrap him up. They finally do so. Palmer in there, as well as Morales, and that lets you know what kind of a left tackle Morales is as he comes all the way out to the line to make that tackle. I mean, that's a long ways to go for a big defensive lineman. Manastra made a nice move to free himself up from the first tackler. A good pursuit by that A-West defense was able to keep him to a short game. Fourth down. Ball at the 15-yard line. It's going to be a fourth down and five. And we're going to go for a field goal on this uh, this opportunity. Yeah, once again, young man has a heck of a foot. We've seen it so far yards. tonight. Paul Kramer's going for a 32-yarder. Puts the ball down. It's up. And does he push it? No good. Pushes it off to the left side. The defense for the Wildcat finally come through, and they stop this offensive attack by the Overland Trailblazers. Now, once again, you're talking about a very, very potent offensive attack. 14 points is not a lot to make up, Eric. 32 <laughs> seconds left in the first period. If there's one thing our battle West has shown the ability to do this year and score, and score quick. You don't have to go much further than the game against Mullen with a 14 touchdowns in the final two minutes of the game to win it. This is a fast strike offense. You blink, you may miss them. Craig Head and Dern off to the right side, or left side, excuse me. Off to the right is Pyatt. Pyatt's going to get a block. Checking into the ball game is Sims. As he tries to put a move on, crossing that 20-yard line out to the 23. It's going to be a second down and seven for the Arvada West Wildcats as they have the ball once again at their own 23. The Overland defense should be well rested. I know a number of these kids play both ways. But uh, they haven't been on the field much. Our Battle West first uh, series of three plays and out, so this is the defense that uh, has been well rested. Well, Coach Logan's going to let the clock tick on down, switch sides, and uh, the way he's looking right now is everything we've done to the south has not gone very well. Everything so far in the first quarter to the north has gone very well. Let's switch sides and let's go the other way. 12 minutes up on that clock, switch sides, put that ball down at the 23. Second down and seven and start all over again as Cavalieri comes in at quarterback again. Look at this A-West defense here on the sidelines, Don. Uh, not only were the first teamers, but the second and third teamers all huddled up to the gut check time for the Wildcats. And they realize it, and uh, they came up with a big play that last time. Hey, if they let Overland go in for a touchdown there, it's 21 nothing. Uh, even though there's still three quarters of football to play, put yourself a serious hole. But then forcing Overland to kick the field goal and then being fortunate that Kramer wasn't able to knock it through the stick. Uh, this defense uh, gave this Arvada West team some life and they desperately needed it. Craig head out, out to the right side. Pied off to the left side. I back, our eye formation set. Cavalieri right behind him. Craco and Duran. Second down and seven. 23 yard line of the Wildcats. They have the ball trailing this one 14 nothing. First play of the second quarter. Dern straight up the middle. Showing that speed like only he can. Breaks it out to the 34 yard line. First down and 10 and that's the offense that we're talking about. You get the running game going and all of a sudden Eric you're going to find Pyatt down the right side by himself. When you're a guy like Josh Jones, Eric Fowler, or Joe Shepard, you don't have to open up that big of a hole for a guy like Mike Durant. He's short, he's small, you give him a crack, he's going to break through it for that kind of speed. He's the kind of guy where you don't give him much of a hole, but he'll find it and he'll make some big yards. Pyatt to the top of the screen, Paul Dino to the bottom. I formation set once again, Craco and Dern, your quarterback Cavalieri. First and ten, their own 34-yard line. Turn around, give it to Dern, same play off the other side. Hit quickly as he crossed that line of scrimmage, though, by Leonard, and then just a little bit of power and legs pushes him out to the 39-yard line. Going to give you a second down now and five, and that was all power that time by Duran. Yeah, I mentioned the last time that he's small, but like Hyatt, he's tough. He got hit at about the 36 and was able to gain an extra two or three yards with that. Bronco, you being around, the, or Don, you being around the Broncos a lot, know that, that that yards after contact, the coach is low. No doubt about it. 
All right, Craig, head to the lower end of the screen. Up at the top, you're going to have Ranson. Single back in the backfield is Duran. Second down and five, 39-yard line. Turn around, go back to the play again. Give it to him. Another first down as he pushes it out to the 40-yard line. Finally taken down there by Lucero, the middle linebacker. Interesting strategy here by our battle left. We were talking about, hey, this is an offense that can strike quickly, score points in a hurry, and then what do they do? Four plays, four rushes. It looks like they're trying to grind it out, and they're doing a pretty effective job. The offensive line is able to give uh, Drew the room he needs. And he's running hard. Again, that time he was hit at about the 41, 42 yard line. They able to pick up an extra two or three before he was back. Well, Craco comes back in. Craig Head's going to come to the lower end of your screen. Pyatt's going to the top side. So you have Craco and Dern in the backfield, I formation set. Pyatt brought in the play, so look for a pass. Cavalier, your quarterback, first and 10, 45 yard line of the Wildcats. 10 17 and counting in the first half. Rolling out, find the tight end, wide open, nowhere to go. Great defensive stop by Dandridge as Bernhorn was met a yard or two past the line of scrimmage. They're going to end up giving him two yards on the play. But he was just driven back by Brandon Dandridge, the 5'9", 150-pound junior. It's interesting. Arvada West hasn't looked to uh, spread the field and open up this game. Their both passes have gone for three and two yards, respectively. Uh, well, here you like go. <laughs> not open it up, but as soon as I say that... Trips formation to the left. Pyatt, the lone receiver, off to the right side. Dropping straight back as Cavallari sets up the screen. Finds his man in the backfield in Sims. Sims has some blockers in front of him. Breaks the midfield stripe. Down inside Trailblazer territory for the first time for the Wildcats as he breaks it down to the 28-yard line. Why not take Duran, Pyatt, Craig Head, <laughs> Ranson, and Paul Dino, spread them all out, and then throw it to the guy no one expects to get the ball in Matt Sims and let the tailback run with the football a little bit. Creative play calling on that one. Third down and three. Big, big third down for the Wildcats. But I would almost bet you right now that Coach Logan would go for it on fourth down. Yeah, Ball. He's an aggressive coach. No, yeah, doubt about no doubt about it. Pie it alone at the top of your screen. Craig head at the lower end. I have formation set. Turn around, give it to turn. Can he get the first down? No! He was met before he hit the line of scrimmage, and he's pile-driven at the 49. And when he was pile driven, it was straight down by Lucero. Also helped out in there by Leonard. You know, Leonard's an interesting character. Kind of undersized in the defensive end, 6'1", 170. This guy was the defensive player of the game in that game. Overwin played in Florida against Barron Collier and Allen. I think I know this guy pretty well. I thought Fourth this was down to the and, and four. Pied alone at the top of the screen. I formation set. Cavalier, your quarterback. Craig head at the lower end. Flip it back to going for the reverse. Pyatt gets it with the speed. He's got the first down and then some. Brings it down the sideline, and you can kiss him goodbye. He is going to go 49 yards. I told you, every time he touches the ball, he is going to at least make a few yards, if not score. You saw it develop. They pitched the ball back. Leonard did not stay home from his right end. He committed too far. Nice block inside by Cavalieri. And once you got the speed kicking, tie it down the sideline for six points. Awesome, awesome play call. You saw the speed of Brad Pyatt and Damon Leonard. His aggressiveness was the Achilles heel on that play. He got sucked in by the running back. Sure Pyatt speed can't recover against a guy like Brad Pyatt. Put the ball down. Pollen comes in, nails it through. And we have a 14-7 ball game just like that. 8.03 left in the first half. The Wildcats finally draw some blood. They're going to kick this ball off and bring the defense out and try to stop this Overland Trailblazer team again. Once again, you can feel that old momentum just shifting a little bit towards the Wildcats. And, and all I'm going to say is the son of a gun, I mean, the ball's at midfield on fourth down and four. And Third down and three, you get stuffed. You kick that ball around, and uh, Coach Logan and company, I mean, ice in the veins. Fourth and four at midfield, your team's trailing 14 to nothing. I don't know many coaches who would go for it in that situation, but like you said, I mean, I watched him he's do made that. a living over the last three I watched four years. him last year against Columbine do it, and I watched him last year against Bear Creek do it. I mean, I, I'm going to change his name, and from now on in the sports, so he'll be known as Iceman. Here we go. Let's kick this one away, see exactly what you can do with it. Monastra and Dandridge back to receive. The big fella puts his foot into it, and there's no way you're receiving this ball. Through another the end zone back. once again, another touchback. Once again, in high school football, 
That ball breaks the plane. It's an automatic touchback. Bring it out to the 20. And let's set the offense again with Manfredi, Hutchings, Manastra, Richardson, Hamilton in the possession uh, spots. And then you go ahead and put Knutson, Ny Nybauer, Garcia, Aragon, Hickson, and Drapen up front. You know, Don, the law of averages were in Logan's hands. And he may have had this in his head because... You know, on, just on his pass receiving statistics, Brad Pyatt averages 22 yards every time he touches the football. Only needed four there. Like I said, the law of averages are in his favor. Here's that wild lineup once again. You have a tight end, and then you bring a wide receiver in. Go straight off that hole. Dandridge not going anywhere this time as the defense stayed home. Nice defensive adjustment. First man in on that defensive possession was Joe Knight, the 5'10", 200-pound junior. It appears as if the Arvada West defense has given up on that switching right before the ball snap. They're just staying with their base defense. And I think that's a smart decision because this is a defense that's played pretty darn well this year. And they should come into this game thinking we can play Overland straight up and do some damage. I think they've abandoned the thought of trying to confuse the Overland offense with a lot of movement. They're just playing them head up. Well, man, Freddie's going to his regular offensive set now, going split backs in the backfield. Off to the lower end of your screen is Hamilton. Up to the top is Richardson. Dropping straight back to oh. man, Freddie the Magician. Gets out of it. I don't know how. Palmer tips the ball in the air. And coming away with it is Dandridge. The ball has been on the ground <laughs> by man, Freddie. Picked up by Dandridge. Now the ball tipped in the air by Palmer. And once again, Dandridge, right place, right time. And, and as they tell you, not only in life, but also in football, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Jeff Flora is sitting there saying, Coach, man, I had him. He was right there. Flora was all over Manfredi, but Manfredi the magician. That's his nickname. out of the tackle and was able to make something out of nothing. A nice play there by Anthony Manfredi. Now you know why they call him that. Third down and four. They're on 26-yard line. Trailblazers have the lead, 14-7. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. Split backs in the backfield. Manastra and Hutchings. Turn around, quick and hand, quickly hand it off inside. And as I say, Hutchins, because all I saw was the two, but it's Dandridge carrying the football. And there's nothing going there. It's going to be a fourth down. First punt situation tonight for the Overland Trailblazers. 6-12 left in the first half. And after a rocky start by that A-West yes. defense, back-to-back -back big defensive stands. Uh, after that quick start by Overland, you can the scoreboard, and A-West is only down by seven. Uh, like you said, Don, uh, I think momentum has officially switched over to the right of the Well, Big Eric Drapen is back to punt this one away. I would almost guarantee you kick he's angling for out of bounds somewhere. <laughs> you have Dern and Hyatt back. He's going to kick it to him. Hyatt comes down with it. 31-yard line. Breaks to the outside. Can he get a block? Yes. Still on his feet. Move it again. 40. 50. Off to the races. Get a block by Dern. Inside the 30. Can he move? Touchdown! Unbelievable is right as he gets that ball at the 30-yard line and goes 70 yards later for a touchdown. And I told you at the beginning of the broadcast, you give him the ball and he's going to score. And we have seen that. All of a sudden, we're not in this thing up. Tony Manfredi's going to see Hyatt in his dreams tonight. There is no doubt in my mind. I don't know why you can go kick this thing out of bounds. I mean, I've watched our battle last year three times. I think it's every game they will keep going to at least a kickoff or a punch or a touchdown. Don't even give him the opportunity to try it. I mean, he sees an opening. He shows you why he's probably the fastest player in the state because he turned on the gas and nobody. No was going to No, there was no way in the world. That was an unbelievable athletic demonstration. As he, people were trying to arm tackle him and they couldn't do it. Flags fly. Figure out who they're going to call it on. The Arvetta West Wildcats do that, the swinging gate as they get ready for the extra point. And it appears right now as if the call may go on the defense. If it does, you're going to bring that offense in and go for two. Is this coming into the game? You see guys like Craighead and Ransom checking in. Well, let the official make the call. Encroachment defense. Move that ball half the distance. So you're going to put that ball around the two yard line, one and a half yard line, bring the offense back out. No, they're going to kick this one. That surprises me. Coach Logan on a fourth down and four. Well, I mean, it really doesn't. Understanding you look at that little card and it says right now, kick the ball. That's, that's true. And every coach, whether it be high school, college, or the pros, has that little card. <laughs> or someone on his staff has the card, one or the other, but they, 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 they tend to go off of that card frequently. They won't stray very often. 
The Stellar Bowl artificial turf. You add a little bit of speed by Pyatt and Dern and give Mr. Pyatt two touchdowns here tonight. Dern came in leading this team with six touchdowns. Pyatt had five. Well, Mr. Dern, you gave it up. That ball is up and that ball is through. We're knotted up 14-14. This game very easily could have been 21-0 as the Wildcats turn the ball over twice. One on a bad snap as the ball sails over Dern's head. The second time on a kickoff. And we have 5.31 left in the first half, and we're knotted up 14 14. Do uh, Dorin mm. and Pyatt have a nickname? Fire and Ice or something? You know? I mean, they are two headed monsters that just wreak havoc to any opponent on that left side. I mean, it's unbelievable, Bob. I've seen I saw the Fort Collins game, I saw the Wheat Ridge game, now I'm watching this game, I saw the uh, Eagle Press game last year. I mean, these two guys literally are game breakers oh, yeah. in every sense of the word. There's no doubt about it. And, I mean, Pyatt, every time he touches that ball, as we've alluded to too many times already tonight, is a danger. I mean, he will. he's a danger to score on you. And I, I don't know why you would kick to him. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that kind of, I mean, Coach right Man now. Freddie said, hey, we're going to challenge him. Well, yeah, but Man Freddie right now <laughs> feels like uh, Coach Mack when he kicked, kicked it to the rocket. You just don't do that. Ball comes down. Oh, and they catch it inside, bringing the ball back quickly. Up the middle, still on his feet is Hutchins. He's going to break the plane of the 25, bring him down to the 27-yard line. And that's where the Overland Trailblazer offense will get underway once again. Don Martin, Eric Christensen with you. The Arvada West Television Network as we uh, come to you live once again from the Stutler Bowl. This is an unbelievable contest uh, just developing between up or before our eyes. And between us as well, <laughs> as we watch this thing happen, man, Freddie's going to open up the offense. He's going to go a couple of wideouts off to the bottom of the screen, one to the top. Anthony Manfredi, the quarterback, Tony Jr. And quickly jumping is Hutchings. See, Anthony Manfredi is doing something with his cadence, and you're going to get an offside. Somebody jumped again. And, you know, the Arvada West defense has been called twice now for jumping. The offense has been called three times. And now you're going to go with an illegal shift, so... Too many guys in motion. What happened? You had your slot back go in motion, and as he was going in motion, Hutchings jumped. The official, I don't know why he didn't call it immediately, <laughs> you know, but he allowed the play to go ahead and roll out. Yeah, why wouldn't they have called that immediately? Because usually when the offense has a penalty like that, they blow the play dead before it even starts. Well, once again, the official was trying to remember the book. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, and he, he got the play down there for a second. And, and now our battle was it. declined. So Second and ten. Not that you don't see usually on Saturdays during these college football. I tell you what, uh, you know, between Rudy Andrade and Dave Logan, if, if you're going to sit up here and guess, you're going to kill yourself. Single back in the backfield is Hutchings. A couple of wideouts off to each side, going in motion from left to, left to right is Monastra. Turn around, handed off to Hutchings in the middle. He was wrapped up quickly, knocked off his feet first of all by Flora. All kinds of hands grabbing him thereafter in white jerseys. This is an important series for Overland because after gaining momentum through the first first or the first quarter of this first half, they had all the momentum. Then Arvada West was able to come up with a few big big defensive stands. Brad Pyatt was his usual spectacular self, and now momentum with our battle left at Overland can somehow manage to get a first down here and start running this clock, maybe go into the locker room tied 14 all. Not a first half, bad first half for the Trailblazers. Well, they have a third and six. Handed inside. Quick oh. shot to Hutchings. He gets out of a tackle. That was just bulk and bruising hard hitting as he drags Flora beyond the 35-yard line out to the 37. That was just flat out guts and glory as he pulls himself into a first down position. You know who's having a big game defensively for our Battle West? Ryan Palmer. He was the guy who hit Hutchins there in the backfield. Unfortunately, he didn't get any help and wasn't able to bring Hutchins down, but not necessarily Palmer's part. That was fault. That was a pretty uh, wonderful effort there by Julius. Well, Flora wrapped him up. He just got drugged a little bit. Hutchins is only 5'6", 170 pounds. Shows you what kind of leg strength he has. Contact. Hey. Richardson to the top of the screen. Hamilton to the lower end. Tailbacks in the backfield. Hutchings and Monastra turn around. Having this one off to Monastra, and he rumbles on out for a quick five yards on first down. Ball was at the 37-yard line of the Trailblazers. They're going to push it out to the 43 on this second down, and, and right now the, the that Veer offense seems to work. Yeah, I mean, Overland has played a great first half. I'm sure if uh, 
Coach Man Freddy could have uh, sat down before the game and picked out a scenario, this would be pretty close to it. It's just two big plays. Fourth and four, Pyatt takes a reverse 50 yards for the score, then he takes a punt 70 yards for the score. Split backs in the backfield once again. Richardson at the top, Hamilton at the bottom of the screen. Manfredi, your quarterback, puts it right into the gut, and what a quick handoff it was. He faked that. He stuck it in his gut and rolled on out as he was faking the handoff, and Monastra just took it and ran right up the gut. Breaks the plane into Arvada West territory, down to the 45. That was a bullet shot out of a gun. I'm really impressed with both Hutchings and Monastra guys, who are only 5'6", 5'8", 170, and 160. They run the ball much bigger than that in between the tackles. These aren't guys who make a lot of living on the outside. No. They're small guys making their living inside the tackle. That's but impressive. you just hit it on the head. They're small guys and they're explosive. Yeah. Hide behind and those offensive Sure. Guys. I mean, and then all of a sudden you're gone. Turn around. Here's oh. another pass opportunity. Flores chasing him down. Nails him. No way was he getting out of that. I mean, Flora had a bead. It was blindside. Man, Freddie never saw him until it was too late. Flora takes him high and just pile drives him into the turf back to the 48-yard line, and that is a huge loss of seven yards. Jeff Flora, 33 tackles on the season coming into this football game, and uh, you remember a couple plays ago when he had Ben Freddie in his hands back here around the 15, and then Freddie was able to escape? <laughs> this time, Flora made sure that didn't happen. Yes, he did. 238 and counting in the first half, 14-14. Second down and 17. Oh, what a hole. Flora finally hits him at the 45-yard line. Drug down to the 47. Carrying the ball for the first time tonight was John Brown, 5'11 senior. Where did he come from? But that was an explosive run. He got that ball, and he uh, took off. They have some speed, but uh, you brought it up earlier. Uh, the offensive line is just opening up tremendous holes right now. Well, that's the kind of play, you know, where a draw is a pretty good call because Arvada West thinks you're going to pass it. And if you run a draw, you've got pretty good opportunity to pick up five or ten yards. First time we've seen the Trips formation tonight for the Overland Trailblazers. Trips off to the left side. Uh, Offensive lineman moves. Jumping up quickly and moving out of his way, and you can't do that. It's going to kill you every time. Four penalties, five 20 Thompson. yards. And one that Arvada West declined. That's true. Pulls that ball back again, five yards. Push it back this time to the 48-yard line of the Arvada West Wildcats. Legal procedure, third down now and 14. Big 14 yards for the Trailblazers. 149 and counting in the first half. They do not want to give that ball back to the Wildcats because right now the Wildcats special teams and offense is just clicking. If they do, you might expect them to run the ball here to either make the clock run or to force Dave Logan to use a timeout and hopefully pin our battle west deep. Split backs in the backfield. Manfredi turns around, puts the option straight up the gut. And oh. this one to Hutchings, and he just continues, or that's Monastra, and he just continues to drive, drive, and drive. Finally taken down by Knight, but not until he gets to the 41-yard line. I'll tell you what, again, tough inside running by these little halfbacks. Oh, and that time, Monastra hit immediately in the backfield. He was able to spin his way out of a pretty solid hit and uh, make positive yardage, picking up eight yards. Fourth down in the long six. Tony Manfredi Sr., the, the head coach, calls a timeout, brings the entire offense over to the huddle. The ball's down at the 40-yard line of the Wildcats. You know, Tony's over there thinking that damn Logan. He went forward on fourth and four and scored a touchdown. Is he going to do the same? And he did it from the 49, <laughs> and I've got it at 39. And he drew the line in the sand, and if I don't do it, That's they're going to say I don't it. have any chutzpah. You got it. Exactly right. <laughs> this is a man versus man thing here. And man, Freddie, being the, the Italian that he is, he's related to my wife's family. I'll tell you what. And we know there, your wife doesn't some, back down. Hey, there's some <laughs> folks with a little bit of attitude now. I mean, they're going to come at you. <laughs> Coach Logan but and you, Coach Manfredi are two coaches who they're not going to back down from any no, challenge as but, we've but, seen over the years. But now look at what you have here. You have Manfredi against Andrade. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, Paisan. Bring him on in, and he's going for it. Fourth down and six. Try to draw a west offside. Uh, that's the question. And Freddie's been able to get people to jump. Unfortunately, out of the eight jumps, five of them were his. Turns around, hands it straight. Nope, and Freddie keeps it. Rolls to the outside. Gets enough for the first down. 
Heads up, quarterback keeper. He was keeping that all the way. And Jesse Brannon, and he have a few words out there. Here comes the second flag. They're throwing flags, and this uh -oh. is after the play. A whole lot of John going off on that cross now, side. Now, the officials going to be line. able to actually target someone, or is it going to be offsetting? Hopefully, it's an offsetting deal right now because uh, you don't want to target one side or the other. You know, man, Freddie, he's six foot, 195 pounds. He's got a lot of foot speed right there. Quick like I a mean, cat, though. He got Quick the like a cat. You know who he reminds me of? Mike Krzyzewski. Yeah, he really, really does. Really quick feet. Maybe not the fastest guy in the world, but just a lot of quick feet. Well, and the one thing he reminds me of is Mike Machete that is not injured because, I mean, he's not getting <laughs> yeah. hit by 400 pounds. The officials all gathered together. They're having a little huddle deciding which kid invited which kid over for dinner <laughs> and who said what about the other mom's cooking because that's basically what we're saying here. Here we go. On sportsmanlike conduct. On the, there's that part of it. Okay, cross your arms, there you go. On the offense. Oh, ho, ho. Whoa, and that's where it's gonna go. So see, Jesse Brandon did not get caught. Man, Freddie or somebody had a few words on that sideline. Could have even it was, been someone on the sideline well, because the tackle was made on the Overland side. Maybe someone wasn't even playing. Dead ball foul, so it's gonna be after the first down. It's gonna be now a first down and what, 25? That, is that ball? Well, no, now they're going to go back and say that it was no, also steady. on. Yes. No. See, that's the thing about high school. You've got to go one way and then you bring it back the other way. So it was offsetting. First down. Put the ball down. 34 yard line. And let's say get a minute. Can only leave the ball where it was I'll never understand it, but the rules are rules. You know, call me a rebel. Yeah, but darn it, sometimes rules are here to be broken. All right? Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the whiteouts off to the lower end of your screen. They include Manasco and Hamilton. Off to the right side is Richardson. Here we go. Looking for the timing pattern. Wants Richardson to go up by intersection pipe. Pyatt climbs the ladder at the 11-yard line, and you left a full minute on that clock. Look out. Here come the Wildcats. Pyatt, two touchdowns and an interception here tonight. It would have been dangerous had he been able to keep his feet. This has been Brad Pyatt against Hobart. It really has. <laughs> I mean, it really has. And, and you don't want to take They're anything away from... Well, I mean, you don't want to take anything away from all the guys that were throwing blocks down there as Pyatt was jitterbugging in the backfield. I guess that, that term doesn't work anymore in this generation, jitterbugging, <laughs> as he was uh, whatever dancing down there. Trips off to the left side. Off to the right, Pyatt by himself. Dropping straight back. Quick draw play. Durin nowhere to go. Defense stayed home and did a wonderful job. Trying to find out who hit him first. First man in there is Elias. Mike Elias, 6'3", 235-pound right tackle. Nice play to call by Coach Logan. Drop back, making him think he's going to pass it, trying to sneak Duran up the middle because any time he gets the ball in Duran's hands, good things can happen. Just a fine defensive there, play there by uh, the Oberlin defensive tackle. Losing a lot of seconds on that clock, ticking inside I the 30-second mark. Dave might be content to... Uh, no way, minutes. no way. Trips Eight off to the inside. Tie it by himself on the right. Dropping straight back. There you go. Give it the turn uh -oh. again. He's got a block. Can he get another one? Cut inside. Still running. Cross the 30. Taken down the 31 yard line. 10 seconds left. Are they going to call timeout? I know they're going to move the chains and stop the clock. Yes. Cavalry comes up for a timeout. And there you go. Like I said, I've worked with this man for too long. There's no such thing. <laughs> Is running out the clock. But you know what? It was a safe play call. <laughs> it really was. It was a draw from your own 10 yard line. Well, and it was the exact left. same play. If at first you don't succeed, yeah. try again. You know, the first time uh, during the film for a loss, that time you picked up good yardage. But a nice play there by uh, Jackie Searing Chop. He was able to cut Duran off and get him to the outside, force him back into the inside of the field where the overland pursuit was coming. That was a play where Duran tried to attack on another 10, 20, 30 yards. But the containment by Phil Chanto from his defensive back spot forced Duran to go inside with a pursuit. Well, you're going to have five wide receivers line up now. Hail Mary. And you're going to send Pyatt as fast as you can down one side. I think they're going to throw it up and hopefully he can rest under it, uh, a la the. Uh, Mullen game. You know what, though? A Hail Mary for our Vada West could very well be a screen pass. Let's see what they have. Oh, yeah. Pyatt, but here you, know? you go. You have Pyatt lined up one on one. Speed against speed. Lower end of your screen. Trips off to the right side. Single back in the backfield is Dern. He may run the same draw play. 
10 seconds left in the first half, 14-14. Wildcats with the ball. Don Martin along with my partner Eric Christensen, the Arvada West Wildcats, Wildcat Television Network. Drop it straight back. Nope, goes underneath. He just wanted to go put it in his hands and see what he can do with it. Quick dump pass in the flat. Get the ball out to the 40. Pyatt catches it. I don't know if he said something, but uh, he sure got a reaction out there. Talking some trash coming back this way was Damian Crawley. Crawley, like, the outside linebacker, is one of those. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> Six seconds left. 39-yard line of the Wildcats. Trips off to the right side. Craighead. Inside, you have Craighead, Ramson, and Paul Dino. And here you go, and he's going that way. Craighead's out there, rests underneath it. Can he go up? No, oh, almost took the ball away. It was a nice effort, nice defensive footwork as well. Ball was not going to be cut. Resting in front of him was Dandridge. Dandridge had a heck of a first half on the defensive backside for the Oakland Trailblazers. Well, it is halftime. The score, 14-14. When we come back, third quarter action coming your way next right here on the Arvada West Wildcat Television Network. Wrap up, you got about a minute and 35 seconds left in the half. Don Martin, Eric Christensen with you on the Wildcat Television Network and see the uh, captains at the middle of the field once again. The Arvada West Wildcats will receive this football to start out the second half. They were trailing Eric by 14 points. They nodded up, making it 14-14 at the half, and I know you have some stats there. We're going to see an offensive explosion. I just feel it in my bones. Well, it was a close first half on the scoreboard, Don. It was pretty close statistically. Overland 133 total yards. Our battle west 108, leading the Trailblazers in rushing. It was Julius Hutchings, nine carries for 45 yards. Nick Minostra had 35 yards. Tony Manfredi or Anthony Manfredi, I should say, had 32, and Dandridge had 19 for the Wildcats. Duran, seven carries, 39 yards. Pyatt, one carry for 49 yards. Sims had two yards rushing. Cavallari, four of six, only 18 yards passing for a West Manfredi, three of six, an interception, pretty a big interception. It looked like Overland was going to be able to at least kick a field goal in that series and maybe take the lead, but the interception by uh, Pyatt nullified that. Uh, man, pretty three of six for 12 yards. You have two, two pretty big injuries, it appears, from here. Craco. Craco, as well as Josh Ranson, both coming out of the locker room without their shoulder pads and helmets as they walk across the field. Craco is an awesome fullback, has been for four years now at uh, Arvada West, and, and he's going to come out of this game and sit on that sideline. He and Josh Ranson both will have to see exactly what Coach Logan does to fill those voids. I mean, you're talking about your third receiver, uh, one of your top four receivers anyway, uh, if you want to put numbers to these guys, and then you're talking about your number one fullback and have to miss the second half of this ball game. Thankfully, neither look too seriously hurt. You hate to speculate, but they are out there walking around. Looks like it might be a precautionary measure. At least neither of these kids are laid up or anything, so uh, that's the good news in all this. Stomach flu's been going around. I know that. It's been around our place, and uh, we just hope that it's something similar to that instead of something else. Well, Duran and Pyatt go back. They're going to rest themselves comfortably around the 10-yard line. I don't know why, because the ball's not going to go that far. <laughs> we, we know that from uh, previous kicks as uh, Paul Kramer gets set to kick this one off for the Overland Trailblazers. Once again, 12 minutes up on the clock. Third quarter action getting ready to get underway from the Stutler Bowl. Don Martin, Eric Christensen with you. 14-14 the score, and let's kick this one off and start the second half. Put into it, and that's an ugly pooch. Ball goes straight up in the air. Still on his uh -oh. feet. Break the 40. Take it out at the 42-yard line. And bringing the ball back quickly was Brian Johnson for the Wildcats. And here we go. Cavallari, Duran, Pyatt, Craighead. Make up your receiving tailback and quarterback. Jeff Flora is going to replace. I was going to say, I'm looking to see who's going to replace. Yeah, and it's going like to be Jeff Flora. Flora. Flores coming in, Bernhorn, Jones, Fowler, Shepard, Seek, and Helgeson make up the front line as we quickly write Flores' number down here and give him the, the fullback hunters for the rest of this ball game. Penalty being called as well. We're going to find out exactly what it was. It's some sort of unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and that's exactly what they're going to call. 15 yards against, again, the Overland Trailblazers. That tally now moves up to how many penalties? 
uh, six penalties for 50 yards. Well, move the ball down to the Overland Trailblazer 44-yard line, and that's where Cavalier and company are going to come on out. High it to the top of your screen. Craighead to the lower end. Lone back in the backfield will be Duran. Floor is going to line up as a as another tight end. Turn around, hand it off to Duran. Duran's going to try to get a crackback block. Gets one by Craighead. Tries to turn it up. Leaves the ball down on the turf. They're going to say after he was hit and taken down at the 42. Quick pickup of two. Taken down by Dandridge and company. Josh Jones had a sweet pancake block from his left tackle position. He took Eamon Leonard and just took him to the ground. But Duran, uh, good pursuit by the Overland defense as Duran wasn't able to find any running room around the left side. Sira Chantro in there as well on that last one. Pyatt moves to the top of the screen again. Lower end of your screen will be Micah Paldino. Single back in the backfield is Durant. First, or excuse me, second down and eight. Ball at the 42-yard line of the Trailblazers. Oh, Durant is met in the hole by Elias and Leonard, and they pancaked him. Elias, 6'3", 235 pounds. Leonard, 6'1", 170 pounds. Duran only 180, but you notice he <laughs> took that hit, and he didn't go down right away. Duran's a tough customer. He was able to fight his way, make some positive yardage, but uh, nonetheless, good defense there by the Trailblazers. A lot of running backs in this ball game on either side that are under six feet. <laughs> and you know what? They're just carrying people around tonight, yeah, as they you are. said. You're right about that. Third down and six. 40-yard line of the Trailblazers. Knotted up at 14 apiece. Ten minutes left in the third quarter. A couple wideouts off to the top of your screen. Dropping back oh. is Cavalieri. Looks in the flat, finds Pyatt. Pyatt goes up, gets it. Taken down quickly by Dandridge. But Pyatt climbed the ladder once again and pulled it down. 14-yard completion on the play. And that time, uh, Pyatt just got to the ball better than the defensive back. The defensive back on the play was Anthony. Or actually, it was a free safety, Anthony, Anthony Manfredi. But Pyatt... Just had, I guess, a better awareness of his surroundings. Was able to control his body, go up and make the catch. Pyatt, as well as Paul Dino, coming to the lower end of your screen. Single back in the backfield is Dern. They're going with single backs now and using Flora as that second tight end instead of the fullback. Oh, Dern straight up the middle, finds a hole, still on his feet. Met in the backfield by your quarterback, Anthony Manfredi, who plays free safety. And guess what? He caught him only because he was the only guy left as he brings him down at the 11-yard line. A huge flag in right the backfield. The Holding Arvada West are going to bring this thing back. And that, that was a huge hole, and he was shot once <laughs> again out of a cannon. Maybe that's why there was a huge hole, huh? You know, I'm looking at Krako, your fullback, down in front of us now, and he has a, a raft coming all around his body and then over his right shoulder. It almost looks as if he might have dislocated that shoulder. Has the uh, right arm also wrapped up in there so he can't move it. Holding offense, as my partner alluded to, Don Martin, along with uh, the one and only Eric Christensen, better known in these parts Thank as Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood Christensen, and then we go fire and ice to the outside. You have Craighead <laughs> and Pyatt, Dern in the backfield. Cavalier, your quarterback. First down and 20, 37-yard line of the Trailblazers. Goes to the outside. Pyatt could not get his feet. No footing yeah, whatsoever Pyatt at the 20. Pyatt fell down on that one. You know, he would have been there, too. It was a quick comebacker. He was pushing him off and trying to drive him off of him down to about the 19. He was going to come back, and he would have been open. After completing passes of 3, 2, and 5 yards in the first half, uh, Dave Logan and Cavallari seemed to be looking downfield a little more. That would have been about a 15 or 20-yard pass, and uh, he just completed a 15-yarder to Pyatt. So it looks like our battle west starting to extend the passing game a little bit. Pyatt, lone receiver to the top of the screen. Paul Dino and Craighead at the lower end of your screen. Dern alone back in the backfield. Cavalieri drops back, sets up the screen, finds Dern. Oh, what a beautiful play. defense. Great read by Leonard. Great read by Leonard. Helped out on the inside by Hickson, but great, great read. And you know where that play was made, Don? Probably on Wednesday or Thursday in film study. Leonard knows that one of the tendencies of this Arvada West offense is to throw little short passes to guys like Pyatt and Durham and let them make plays. That time he was going to the passer, he thought, wait a minute, maybe I should stay back. He did and was able to make a great play. Deuce formation, couple wideouts off to each side. Single back in the backfield, Dern. You have a tight end on each side as well, dropping straight back. Here comes Cavalieri. He's looking over the middle, finds his man. Oh. Craig heads open, touchdown! 
Craighead wide open, 35 yards out, splits the defensive backs, nothing but pay dirt. You talked about going vertical, they went vertical. <laughs> you got and that enough, right. Enough of that horizontal stuff. I think Joe Williams called that play. Boy, I'll tell you what, that was a <laughs> nice little post pattern by Craighead because he found the seam, split it, and Cavallari delivered the ball right on the money. Swing and gate, bring it back across. Get set. Running in quickly from out of bounds is Cavallari. And too much time. Too much time. I'm going to go ahead and allow him to move it back and go for this extra point and Isn't put this ball up again. interesting that Cavallari was out there on the far side getting ready to block, and now he's coming out and they're putting in Sim. Usually your quarterback isn't on your place-kicking team blocking people. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there was a uh, mix-up there. <laughs> yeah, but he ran out there. I, I wasn't going to say it. At first, I, I, I was just thinking, wasn't. like, what kind of fake could this be? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Dave Logan, you never know. Pollen puts his foot into it. It's up, and it is good. We have a 21-14 ball game. The Arvada West Wildcats, they find themselves trailing 14-0 and then rip off 21 unanswered points. The first two touchdowns at the hands of Mr. Pyatt, and that last one, quick post pattern. Coming up underneath, Craighead finds the seam, and he goes in for the touchdown. Nine minutes left in the third, and... Uh, right now, they're, they're just kind of writing the script. And I told you, I kind of felt that in my bones a little bit. There's an offensive explosion in the making. 21 unanswered points for Arvada West after falling behind 14 to nothing. You know, Jeremy Craighead's got to sort of feel like the Rodney Danger field of this offense because as we've been talking about today and most people around the state talk about, when you talk about A. West, you talk about Dave Lake, you talk about Mike Durant, you talk about Brad Pyatt, then bang! guy like Jeremy Craighead comes in and makes a big play. He made a big play. I think it was about a 50-yard touchdown catch against Wheat Ridge as well. So just when you start paying so much attention to some of the other guys, a guy like Craighead can come up and bite you. Well, I'll give you more than that. Craighead was a huge part of that state championship team last year. Uh, you had a lot of guys doing a lot of things, but when they needed that big one, he was there for that. So resting under the ball, Dandridge, and he lets it roll through his hands. He's now discussing things with Manastra, and Manastra and here arguing a little bit. And he goes, excuse me, man, but, but you have to call me off or, or go for it because if you don't call me off, we're going to end up hitting helmets out here and really look stupid in front of all these people. Remember with about, what, three minutes left in the first quarter, we were saying, you know, it's kind of gut check time for the uh, Wildcats to see what they're made of. You know, champions have a way of rising to the top. And they've answered the call. Now it's time to see what Overland's made of. They've given up 21 unanswered points. Mon Monastra takes it right off the handoff, straight up the middle. 32-yard line, boom, another first down just like that. First and 10 at the 20 is where they started. Boom, 12 yards later on the first play, and give it to him. The offensive line opening up some holes. You have to give that to the Overland Trailblazers. Manastra, 10 carries, 47 yards. Hutchins, 9 carries, 45 yards. Overland's had some success on the ground against our Battle West here tonight. Well, I want to see what kind of adjustments Coach Andrade made at halftime uh, because those plays made a lot of yards in that first half. You see some guys filling some gaps right now. Boom, and that's why. Flora jumps right in there and nails Hutchings coming into that hole. That's almost what you're going to have to do is suck your guys up into the gaps. But if you do that and they break that initial wall. Yeah, they're gone. Like you saw it there. If, if Hutchins would have been able to elude that tackler or bounce off it, much like the last run by Monastra, he would have had five or ten yards of open field mm -hmm. before someone would have been there to have the chance to slow him down. I mean, the, the interesting thing they're doing, they do have Pied in there at free safety. And it's going to take a lot for someone to outrun him for a touchdown. A couple wideouts to the top of the screen. The single wideout to the lower end is Hamilton. Single back in the backfield is Hutchings. The quarterback, Anthony Manfredi, he gives it straight back to Hutchings. And Hutchings was met in a hole. Palmer, the first one to hit him, wrapped him up like a sandwich bag. That's got to be Palmer's, what, fourth unassisted tackle here tonight. He's a... Uh, he been in the Oberlin backfield, or at least right on the line of scrimmage a number of times tonight with initial hits and tackles of uh, that time. In the past, we've seen guys like Hutchins and Manastra 
able to elude that first tackler, but Ryan Palmer, that ain't going to happen this time. Well, last year, Arvada West had Palmer, but they also had Lucas. This year, they have Palmer and Flora, and these guys from Philly. Don't forget Jaden McKeel either. No, Jaden plays a heck of a game, too. He just hasn't had his name called very often tonight. Split Leave back the to the sets. backfield. That's true. Man, Freddie the Magician hasn't given up very uh -oh. many tonight. <laughs> oh, that was not a smart play. Man, Freddie, that was that lookout pitch is what it was. He just pitched it back, looked right in the eyes of Hutchings and said, look out, because Jesse Brannon nailed him the moment the ball was pitched. And this is going to push us back to a fourth down and nine. Well, that's a case where if you're Man Freddie, you know that, hey, we got nowhere to go. I'm just going to turn it upfield and see what I can get. Why sell out your running back like that? I mean, that's like a stat you know pitch. Why? Hey, I'm not going to take the four-yard line. You know you why? <laughs> it wasn't that. I ain't going to get hit now. <laughs> he has seven guys in my face. Don't put that paint on me. This is the coach's son. He's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good punt. Big punt. Dern's resting under it. 23-yard 23 23 line. line. Straight up the middle. Here he goes. Shot out of a cannon. Finally taken down by Hutchings. Hutchings gets him the tailback, the special teams captain, the defensive back. <laughs> a little bit of everything out here for Manfredi and company. Ball down at the 38-yard line of the Arvada West Wildcats. And here comes part two of the offensive explosion. If we had replay capability, maybe when the parents and kids are watching this, they can stop it and push rewind. Watch Duran, once he caught that ball, just shoot right up the gap and elude like three or four defenders initially right after he caught the football. Great explosion by Duran. Well, Duran just messed up his shoulder pads, so he had to come out. Quickly coming in, in his place is Sims. Give it to him straight up the middle. Sims across the 50, the 45, puts a hand down, gets it to the 40-yard line. Tremendous running by Sims. 21 yards on the carry, two carries, 23 yards for Matt Sims. Sims uh, making a difference here on offense. That was a nice cutback by Sims. I think that play was supposed to go a little wider out to the left side, but Sims saw that there was an opening on the inside, cut it back, and that's where the running room was. Nice piece of running by Sims. Second time that I have all come this close to calling him Will Rogers because <laughs> of that number. Play it to the top of the screen. See, I was in Nebraska then, so I think you're talking about the old cowboy. <laughs> Paul Dino is at the lower end. New, new fullback in the ball game, and he runs it straight up the middle. Quick draw play, breaks it down to the 27, and it's Zach, and I'm going to butcher your name, Iwi. How would you pronounce it? That's as good as any. Okay, there you go, Zach. I'm just going to call you Zach from now on, Zach, because that was a heck of a block the first time around, and now you come in with a nice pickup. Moving that football and, and doing it with the run, you're going to have to see a pass play here pretty quick. Craighead, lower end of your screen. Pie it by himself at the top. Eye formation set. Going in motion is Burnhorn from left to right. Your quarterback, Cavallari. First down and 10, 28-yard line of the Trailblazers. Stutler Bowl is where we are, 21-14. And Dern was just met in the hole quickly, taken down by Trevor Crow as Crow pulls him off his feet, helped out on the inside by Davis. Trevor Crow is a guy we didn't expect to see tonight. There are a couple linebackers for uh, Oberland who were not expected to play. Trevor Crow was one of them. He's been injured and missed the last two games, but he's been out on the field. And this is sort of his uh, coming out party. Trevor Crow playing for Oberland Edge. You can see on the field. Looks uh, like Shepard. Yeah, it looks like Joe Shepard, the five foot eight, hundred and eighty five pound center for our battle West, is down on the field. Well, you just hit the key word too, center. I mean, you, you don't want to bring in a center and all of a sudden have a different snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, that's big, especially in high school football. Craighead comes in. Paul Dino comes out. Wyatt checking David in Wyatt at quarterback, quarterback for the first time tonight. First time we've seen him tonight. 175 pounds, six foot junior. Young man threw the touchdown to beat Mullen in the waning seconds of that ball game. 5.06 left in the third here. 21-14. Waiting to see what happened to Joe Shepard and who they might stick in there in his place. Don Martin, Eric Christensen with you at the Stutler Bowl. It's that turf. Well, he's going to get up under his own power. He wants to go into the huddle, but they're not going to let him because they you have to come off for at least one yeah. play. He kind of, you know, I don't know if it's because there's that, that little peak out there on the field or because he's seeing Friday already, but he kind of started... <laughs> wavering towards that huddle, almost like uh, 
<laughs> a magnet being pulled in a, a different direction. Speaking of the crown in the field, I don't know, Don, back when uh, down in Oklahoma when they had the Astro Turf, but they had the biggest crown in the world. Really? And when they had the uh, wishbone with Joe Washington, Billy Sims, it was like running downhill, and it literally was. You couldn't see <laughs> over it from one side. You couldn't. Huh? Second and 10, 28-yard line of the Trailblazers. Dropping straight back is Wyatt. Wyatt looks in the oh. flat. Oh, he overthrows Craighead. And I'm going to tell you, he is lucky, lucky that he did. Because had he hit him where he needed to, Crawley was going the other direction for 75 yards. That might be something when Dave Logan looks at the film and says, you know what, David? That was a pretty nice pass. Because he may have just thrown that away knowing that that play would have been picked. Because you're right, if that would have been down uh, to where uh, in the receiver's range, that would have been picked off and possibly taken for six. Baldino, the lone wide out to the bottom of your screen. Up at the top, you will find the speedster, Mr. Pyatt. During the lone back in the backfield, Wyatt did not like what he sees. He calls a timeout on a third and ten because you don't want to make a mistake on a third and ten. But this is four down territory for our better West <laughs> Wildcats. Heck, you can go 20 yards further to the midfield stripe and it's still four down territory. 443 and counting timeout Wildcats. And you know what? If you're Dave Logan... Why not go for it on fourth down? I mean, after a rocky first quarter where your defense really gave up a lot of yardage, hey, you kept Overland off the scoreboard in the second quarter and here almost for the entire third quarter. Your defense is playing a lot better, and, you know, if you don't, if you don't make it, I'd take my chances of uh, my defense not allowing Overland to go 75 yards or so. I, I agree with you, um, and I, I believe everything you just said. But... but. <laughs> It's Dave Logan in his offense. I mean, he could be over here at the 49 and go for it. So you know good and well, inside the 30-yard line, this man is going to go for it one way or another. And if you're a player, you get used to it, and you know right now he's calling this play knowing he's got another shot at it. Most yeah. coaches would be calling a play, hey, we've got to pick up 10 yards. He may be thinking, let's pick up five or six. Paul Dino, the lone wide out at the lower end of your screen. High it off to the top. Duran is your single tailback. Wyatt, the quarterback, the junior in for his first offensive possession, dropping straight back. Here comes the pressure. Goes over the middle, finds Bernhorn, and I don't know how. I don't know how he threaded it in there. I mean, the ball went right under the outstretched hands of Crow, and a couple of other guys slam in as well, and that's going to be enough for a first down. No, you're going to be about a yard short. That was a great pass by Wyatt. It had just enough muster to get in there. I thought the pass was going to be picked off at first. But uh, he, uh, he took a gamble, put some mustard on it, and got it in there to Burnham. You know, you have Cavalier at 6'1", 175, Wyatt 6'1", 175. Wyatt's built differently, though. I mean, he this, this is a pretty big kid. He oh. drops a football, pick it up, go into I the hole. Does he get enough for the first half? That was fourth down and one. And Wyatt picks up that football and gets the first down. Boy, nice heads-up play by Wyatt. He lost control of the snap, picked it up, and instead of trying to stick with the original play, he said, hey, I know we need a yard, put his head down, snuck forward, and I mean, we don't have the best angle in the world, but I do think he picked it up. Well, I do too, but he didn't get the, the generous mark, I'll guarantee you that. The and official marked it with his back foot. Put the ball down. Oh, yeah. yeah the entire it. length of the football. So I think up. the chain was outside the 22-yard line. The ball's placed inside the 22-yard line. You have much I mean, I wasn't the best student I. in the world, but I know that that means it's pretty much first down. Uh, well, you have much younger eyes than I do. I can't see that far. Inside the four-minute mark of the third quarter, 21-14. First down and 10. 17-yard line of the Trailblazers. Wildcats with the ball and the lead. Turn around, give it to Duran. Follows a block into the hole. Gets the ball down to the 10-yard line. Just power running by Duran. 11 carries, 49 yards tonight for Duran. Zach with a heck of a block. This has been a long drive by Arvada West, too. I'm sensing, you know, Oberlin, unlike Arvada West, a lot of these guys play both ways. And I'm sensing that you might be seeing this trailblazer defense getting a tad tired and our battle west just leaning on them and leaning on them i think you're starting to see the difference here in the third quarter craig head off to the lower end of your screen Dern gets the ball nice block by zach get it in drive touchdown that was just all brute strength keep the feet moving as the coach teaches you early on he kept high stepping and just kept walking finally touchdown 
you know, one of the signs of the tired defense, Don? Not tackle. Enough. Yep, and that was a, you saw Duran run through about two or three tackles on the play. Hey, I'm not taking anything away from Mike. We've seen him all year long break tackles. But he wasn't breaking those tackles in the first and second quarter, and I think that's a combination of good hard running by Duran and maybe a defense that's getting just a tad windy. Well, and you, you see Hollywood Pyatt coming out of the game. You almost I thought expect, my nickname was Hollywood. You, you almost expect him. Well, you watch it. Look at, <laughs> look at the decorations on this kid. He's got stuff hanging off his belt. He has wristbands up around his elbows. He's drawing tattoos on his arm. I mean, he has the only purple socks out there, feet all taped up. This kid's definitely Hollywood. See, if, if I was a good football player, if I had his kind of talent, I'd dress the exact same way. Oh, heck I yeah. think it's cool when guys have the oh, black yeah. shoes with the white tape and the long, um, you know, towels hanging from them. I was thinking about this earlier. I want to make a towel for Brad Pyatt, but I don't know if you remember the guy. Remember the Oklahoma State wide receiver Hartley Dykes? Yes. Played on the teams with Barry Sanders. He had a towel that hung over his rear that said bye-bye. <laughs> so when he beat the defensive back and was running in for a touchdown, that's what the guy oh, saw. You we need, we need to get that. Brad one of those, although I don't know if Dave would uh, – well, Brad I think would that wear was too it. cool, but Brad might. He I might guarantee like you Brad would wear it. There's no doubt in my mind. Three minutes, ten seconds left in the third. The Wildcats, 28 unanswered points. They now have a 28-14 lead. Their defense is starting to kick in as well. They have not given up a score since the first quarter. And to be honest, they only gave up one real score. The right. second one, the drive started at the mm -hmm. six-yard line, for heaven's sakes. They've done a pretty good job. I mean, you have to be impressed. Put in the ball, big fella nails this one, and that's in the end zone. No, he gets it at the one. I can't believe it. Run the ball back, left side, puts his shoulder down, and gets level. Bringing that ball back John out Brown. is Brown. Brown's getting spot play here tonight. He's carried the ball a couple of times, and now he finally runs one back as well. This is kind of interesting, and you know the other thing? The Arvada West Wildcats probably have... When they're at home, they have huge crowds, but they have as big a traveling crowd as any other team in the state. <laughs> I mean, these folks really get into their Wildcat football. Hey, when you're undefeated and ranked number one, why? Oh, uh, my gosh. Fumble? fumble down. Yeah. Unable to get his hands on the ball was Dandridge. That ball's down, and now the turnover's going the other way. Coming out of there with that football is Chavez, and the Wildcats get an opportunity to pad some numbers here. Second turnover on the night for Overland. They threw the interception at the end of the second quarter, deep in Arvada West territory. Now Dandridge loses the handle. Ball at, his, at uh, Overland's 16-yard line. Uh, much like Arvada West's defense when they kept uh, Overland out of the end zone in that first quarter and they missed the field goal, Overland needs that kind of stand here. But uh, like I said, it looks like a tired defense. They're up against it here. Pyatt and Craig head out wide, wide right and left. Dern goes in motion. He's going to go to the left side. Turn around, give it to your fullback. Running strong with that football. Finally taken down inside the five to the four-yard line. This young man, Zach Ewe, doesn't get a lot of playing time. But I'll tell you what, he deserves it. He is running hard in the absence of Krako. Two carries, 23 yards for Zach tonight. Uh, the offensive line really is starting to open up some big holes and give our Battle West runners some credit there of running hard, hitting the hole, and exploding through the line of scrimmage. A couple of new receivers into the ball game. You have Paul Dino at the top of your screen. Turn around, hand this ball off to Dern. Dern inside the five. He catches the ball, gets the ball about the six-yard line and just drives himself down to the one. It's going to be a third down and goal from the one-yard line for the Arvada West Wildcats. It's hard for me to see numbers here, but I think it was Kip Rule. He may have been the player that came in for Joe Shepard at the center position. He took the defensive tackle, who I believe was Mike Elias, just turned him around, and that uh, opened up that hole in that last one. You know, I did not notice if Shepard came back or not. He's back in there now. Is he? Yes. Craighead, lower end of your screen. Paul Dino at the top. I formation set. Duran, of course. Touchdown. Yep. Punch it in. Zach with a heck of a block. Duran just kind of rides him like a horse, takes it straight on into the end zone from a yard out. Game's starting to get a little Not ugly. Hand, yeah. You know, there's a stat in the Bronco football games where the Broncos have won 26 straight games when they've scored over 30 points under Mike Shanahan. I wonder what that record is for the Dave Logan-led Wildcats when they score over 30 points. I know what it is this year. 
Oh, 4 and 0. I was going to say, <laughs> underway to 5 and 0. Yeah, they haven't scored under 30 points in any game this season. It's an offensive juggernaut, there's no doubt about it. And, and you know what? Uh, that ball's up and good as well. Rudy Andrade and company have made, you know, we brought it up at the beginning of this quarter that has only two minutes left. Mm -hmm. Wonder what kind of adjustments he made at halftime. They look pretty good. Yeah, they do look really good. And I, I think this team, uh, I think they may have come into this game not necessarily overconfident, but uh, they got a wake-up call early. You know, it was a great start for Overland, but now that you think back on it, maybe it wasn't the best start in the world because maybe it woke up a sleeping giant, so to speak. I mean, Overland came out, dominated the first seven, eight minutes of the football game, but after that, it's been all Arvada West. Uh, they've had long, sustained drives, a couple big plays got them out of that hole that they initially dug for themselves, and now the defense is playing well. Uh, the offense has worn down the Overland defense, and uh, they're actually making it look easy, and who would have thunk it when we were in the first quarter? 35-14, I have to agree with you, but I I've got this feeling in my gut, though. This team honestly believes that there is no score that they can't overcome. Oh, sure. I mean, they they're just an offensive just juggernaut. The ball bounces quickly off the hands of Manastra. He picks it up, dancing around the four-yard line, gets it out to the 10, out to the 11-yard line, and almost fumbles the ball again. Anthony Manfredi and company have to come out and pick this ball up at the 11-yard line and see what they can do with it. I think that's one of the hardest things to do in football that people don't pay much attention to is to try to field those low slip kicks because much like maybe an infield that has a bunch of rocks in it or something, you just never know which way the ball is going to bounce every time it hits the carpet, and that's what happened there. It took a funny bounce on Manastra, oh, and yeah. uh, he and Dandridge just had a hard time coming up with the handle. Especially when you're playing on plastic. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's just going everywhere. A wide out off to each side. Split backs in the backfield. Hutchings and Manastra. Turn around. Give it to Hutchings. Nope. Keeping the ball was man. Freddie he even faked me out. I thought he was going to go on down the line with it. Flick it out to Monastra, but he decided to turn it up himself and picks up three yards, get the ball to the 15-yard line. Overland, with only a minute 30 left here in the third quarter, has to start thinking about possibly putting it up in the air. I mean, I know they like to keep it on the ground, but down by 21 points, you need to score, and you need to score in a timely fashion. Man, Freddie, your quarterback, he's going to go with the straight handoff up the middle. Oh, my. Manastro is just eaten. Palmer's the first one in there. Take Wonderlick off the top as well. Along with Jaden McNeely. Unbelieving. Unbelievable. Yeah, McNeely was up underneath that pile. Just hanging on. This defense is really looking sharp right now. 54 seconds and counting in the third quarter. Don Martin, Eric Christensen with you. The Wildcat Television Network. You talked about the adjustments that they may have made. Well, I'll tell you one adjustment I've seen them make. Remember there they were going, they kept adjusting their front right before the snap. They quit doing that, and they played a lot better defense. And Duran picks one up off of his shoe nail, his toenails, I should say, and just picks it up at the 40-yard line, and he's going the other direction. That's why they don't throw the ball that much. And when you don't, you don't get into a rhythm. And Anthony Manfredi just airmailed one a good four yards over the head of his out. His, re his receiver's outstretched arms, and then uh, Duran just went down and picked it up. Well, the turnover bug has been the Achilles heel for Overland in these last couple of games. I know Anthony threw three interceptions last week in the loss to Cherry Creek. Keep in mind, last year he threw three all season. Tonight he's thrown two picks, so uh, five interceptions in two games. That's a tough hole to dig yourself out of. Cavalieri comes back out, turns around, hands that ball quickly straight back to Sims. Sims crosses that 40 and pushes it out to the 35, 36 yard line. Sims, the junior, has had a nice little uh, night. Only three carries, 27 yards. It's good for the average. Cavalieri back in the game for A West. 18 seconds and counting. I think they're going to let this one tick on down and turn that ball around and go the other direction. You know, we, we talked about it earlier there in the first quarter. We were like, hey, it's gut check time for our Battle West. Let's see what we're made of. And boy, if they answered the call here tonight after going down 14 nothing. I mean, offense, defense, and special teams, all three facets sort of tightened up the screws, so to speak, and uh, they've turned this thing around. Well, we're going into the fourth quarter. They're going to flip the ball around, go to the 36-yard line of the Trail Blazers on the opposite side of the field. Now, interestingly enough, all 49 points in this ball game were scored in the north end zone. 
<laughs> and now Arvada West is turning around and going the other way. They were unable to do anything in the south end zone in the first half, <laughs> in the first quarter, I should say. Now let's see what they can do in the fourth. You know, you're right. All, all, you're absolutely right. Every touchdown has been scored on that one end. <laughs> There's no doubt. So let's see what they can do with a second down and six. 36-yard line of the Trailblazers. You know, when I was in high school, we played Cherry Creek here my freshman year. I think they beat us like, you know, 50 to nothing. I think all their points were scored in that end zone, too. <laughs> hmm, if we would have only known. <laughs> That's it, see? <laughs> Dern and Craighead to the top of your screen. Pyatt, the lone receiver off on the, on the uh, lower end of the screen. Turn around, fake it. Cavalry back, looking for Pyatt. Oh, He's run. wide open. Touchdown! Oh, How you let him get behind you, I don't know. Dandridge and Brown were there, double covering him, and the speed and the separation. And right now, Brad Pyatt has his third touchdown of the night. They just took that jinx away on one play. That's your first South End touchdown. <laughs> cool. Now Pyatt has eight touchdowns on the season. Duran scored two tonight, so he's got eight. So, I mean, those two guys, once again, just game breaker. As you said, fire and ice. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. No doubt about it. That was something else. Joe Williams down there talking to Dave Logan, and uh, you know good and well he's trying to take credit for that last play. Now, now what the heck's a hit man doing down on the sidelines talking to the coach during the game? Well, I mean, he, he was like just... A, like a he was just coach emeritus? Oh, sure. He was just <laughs> in his headphones there, just pulled it off the side. He's like, hey, Logs. I want to tell you, that was a hell of a call, and I thank you for letting me make it. Why is Dave Logan allowing <laughs> Joe Williams to roam his sidelines? Don't Four. you think those kids could get a little better row model than that, man? 42-14 <laughs> the score, 11.54 left in the ball game. This thing is becoming ugly. 42 unanswered points after giving up 14. <laughs> <laughs> You get to work with the hitman all day long. We'll probably come in wearing our Battle West sweatshirt tomorrow. Oh, I have tomorrow off. Some I, just, of us I, I want to get your job. That's all I have to tell you. What, what's a day off? <laughs> well, you know, I, I've had an opportunity to watch Coach Logan do some TV broadcasts because he's in the booth next to us when we do the Broncos. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we had Scott doing the... Uh, Scott Hastings doing the play-by-play -play on KOA, and Dave doing it on doing the color on television as this goes out of the end zone. Dave would sit there and draw up plays. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, he would he would get them from the uh, these NFL the field, teams. Yeah. Oh, the man is he never he never misses a chance to get a play. Mm -hmm. I would hate to see the playbook that these young men look at. <laughs> I bet there I bet there comes a time when Dave's got to sit there. Maybe he's sitting at home some night or whatever, and he sits there and he thinks, you know, now how much do I scale this back? Because I've got all these plays. These are plays that professionals are running. Now where do my kids come into this? I mean, he's got to scale it back somehow, but uh, he does take a lot from what he sees. Manfredi drops back, intercepted once again. Going up high and pulling that ball down is Dirk Cisneros, the 5'9", 165-pound senior. He pulls down a pick, third pick of the night for the Wildcats. The offense comes back out. You have Wildcats celebrating all over this field. Palmer now jumping up and down. What a beautiful interception. We have a flag on the field. They're going to bring this thing back, and they're going to mark it off. That flag's way back in the backfield. Must have been before the play, then, huh, legal? No, they're talking to Wildcats, so it must be coming off on Arvada West. Roughing the passer? Yes. Look at that. Move that ball up 15 yards and get it back. 35-yard line. Face mask is going to be called on the Arvada West Wildcats. 11.47 and counting in the ball game. First and 10, 35-yard line of the Cats. No, excuse me, of the Trailblazers. Trailblazers trailing this contest but do have the ball. They're losing 42-14. Five penalties, 50 yards for Arvada West tonight. Well, the officials blowing the whistle again. Don't these gentlemen understand we have to play a ball game here? <laughs> you know, Dirk Cisneros, he had a really great game against Wheat Ridge, and he's sort of taken Brad Pyatt's place on defense. Pyatt, I know last year, played a lot of defense. This year, they basically solely have him concentrating on offense. See, Cisneros played a lot of defense last year as well. So it's not like he's new to that position either. I'm looking around on the sideline for Pyatt, and I think there, there he is right here. He's getting his hammy stretched out at about the 30-yard line. 
Well, you know, you're, and you're running up and down the field like a gazelle. And three touchdowns later. 11-25 and counting. Pickup of two on that play. Second down and eight. 37-yard line of the Trailblazers. Moving to the top of your screen will be Hamilton. Down at the lower end is Richardson. You have Hutchings and Monastra in the backfield. Here goes the option. Picks it back to Monastra. Monastra gets a little room. Finds a hole. Flora takes him down. Helped out by a host of folks in white uniforms. Does not come up with enough for the first down as he gets pulled down to the 44-yard line. One thing our Battle West defensively has done here in the second and more importantly the third quarter is they've shut down the inside running game of Overland. When Overland was moving the ball quite a bit, they were making a living inside the tackles. However, now some guys like Joe Knight and Chris Chavez and Rob Morella, these guys have really... Uh, tightened up the screws in the middle. They've allowed Ryan Palmer to roam free, and uh, Overland hasn't gotten as much yardage in between the tackles as they once did. Well, they got one that time, <laughs> and as you say that, Joe Knight taken for a ride. Looked like he was bulldogging and trying to pull back on Hutchins. No, excuse me, Monastra. Monastra just going to drug him across the 50 down to the 45-yard line before the big Joe Knight pulled him down. Man, Freddie's limping out there. Yeah, he is. I mean, I he he keeps that. going over for that for the play call, and then he's limping back each time. Rob Morales comes out for the Wildcats and uh, looks a little frustrated, pulling on his helmet. I think he twisted an ankle or something. Keeping the ball, man, Freddie. We said he was twisted a little bit, but he still runs it out. First man there for the Wildcats. What was it in the second quarter? Grunerad. In the second quarter, we uh, said he reminded us of Mike Machete. Someone probably told him that at halftime. He's like, well, you know what? The city's always hurt. i got to start limping a little bit. You know, my ankles hurt. <laughs> you are pathetic. <laughs> you really are. I'm Don Martin. The pathetic one is Eric Christensen. And we're out here having a good the time. pathetic one. <laughs> Boy, it's going downhill fast. Oh, Lord. 42-14. Nine and a half minutes left in the ball game. Wildcats playing a heck of an offensive game here tonight. Defense really standing tall for three quarters. Dropping straight back. Here we go. Air mail it again. Man's out there. Riding high. Tipped up in the air. Intercepted. Cisneros has it. 20, 25, 30. Down the sideline. Out at the 32-yard line. Cisneros gets the tip up in the air from Jesse Brannon. I I'm almost surprised they didn't call some sort of contact, either offensively or defensively, on that play. But Brannon gets a hand up. Tips it in the air. Cisneros says, you guys took one from me. I'm keeping this one. And he kind of... Uh, just tiptoes down that sideline to the 31-yard line. Well, you know, our Battle West has been playing. They've had that safety sort of playing at center field all night long. Anytime uh, Overland's tried to throw the ball deep, they've had very little success because our Battle West has just had a guy back there and he's read the play correctly. Uh, Overland needs to throw some of those short intermediate passes instead of keep throwing it into double cover. High formation set, turn around, give it inside. Zach with the ball, continues to just step on folks. Gets it out to the 34-yard line. So a lost fumble, three interceptions. Uh, that's kind of been the downfall for Overland, but uh, give our Battle West defense credit. I mean, these last couple interceptions have been because Overland's been down on the scoreboard. They've been forced to pass, and our Battle West defense has forced this Overland offense to do what they don't do as well as run the ball in that pass. Well, and if you recall, they also had a fumble that was picked up and run in. <laughs> by Dandridge That's or else right. they would have had another fumble. I formation set. Pitch it back with the football. Running hard oh. as Sims. Oh. Sims to the left side. Gets enough for the first down. Crosses the plane of the 40 out to the 42 yard line. First down and 10. Let's run some clock. Eight and a half minutes left in the ball game. 42-14. Wildcats with the lead and the football on their side of the field. Zach Huey with a big block there to spring Sims for the first down. He just crunched a defensive back, and Sims cut it back, got the seven yards he needed for the, to move the chains. Craighead and Pyatt come back in. Pyatt goes to the lower end of your screen. Up top is Craighead. I'm going to tell you, Pyatt from last year to this year really has put on some weight and put on some bulk. Bernhard goes in motion, switches sides. I mean, he is just a big kid. Straight inside. Zach has the ball. Cross the 50. Down to the 48. In once again to Trailblazer territory. Strong, strong running by the backup fullback. 
Well, they list Brad at 6'1", 185. Well, I agree with you when I saw him last year in the state playoffs. He didn't look quite as big as he does now, but I mean, you and I both know that a number of Division I schools have their eye on Brad Pyatt, and I'm oh, sure gosh. he realizes, hey, you know, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to play football. And, you know, 6'1", 185, that's not bad size for a wideout in college last year. It may have been a little too small this year. Uh, he looks like he's built to play college football. Same formation as last time. Morris and Paul Dino replaced the wide receivers, though, in Craighead and Pyatt. High formation set. Turn around, hand it to him. Same play, just the opposite side. Running strong is Sims. Breaks the plane to the 40. They're going to finally mark him down at the 36-yard line. Strong running by Sims. He's now going to be replaced quickly by Duran. They're just going to run this ball right now, and why not if you can get yardage like that? Once again, Paul Dino and Morris come out. Pyatt and Craighead come back in. And as you talk about Pyatt, he can pick and choose where he goes to play. Uh, you're looking at a wideout, once again, that's played in a passing, passing offense, offense with a very complex offense. Why wouldn't you look at him at a Florida State burn, or a Florida? Or, sure. Dern has the ball. Just speed and punch again. But this time wrapping him up is Charles Duke. First time we've called his name tonight from the free safety position, and he just kind of grabbed him by the back of the jersey and strung him to the ground. However, he did pick up three yards prior to going down. You know, if you're, I mean, I'll be selfish, but you mentioned Florida and Florida State maybe bidding for Pyatt services. Let's hope he stays home. I would love Whether to see him Boulder stay home. Or Fort Collins. Well, you know? hopefully Rick listens and at least talks to him. Uh, you well, know, I've I mean, heard it's just, that Rick's interested. Well, I don't know you if know what? Or not, but. You don't have to be a brain surgeon <laughs> to figure know. out that this kid can play. Look at the blocking by the offensive line. Had he been able to hit Burnhorn, Cavalieri would have had another 15, 20 yards on his stats tonight. The entire right side of the offensive line just totally stopped all defensive pursuit. Cavalieri had another 10 seconds if he wanted it. That's a nice play call, too, because when you get a tired defense who's just been pounded on for an entire half, they're going to have the inclination to over-pursue. They fake the handoff to the left, rolled the quarterback back right, so all the pursuit went one way. They came back the other way, dragging the tight end. That's a nice little play call. Ooh, Sims. But he had the feet just ripped right out from underneath him by Akil Davis. Ooh, that was Short a vicious game. hit right down around the shins. You'll feel that one in the morning. Fourth down and about five. So does Dave go for it? Yes. Go Up ahead. To go ahead and run your there. offense. <laughs> go ahead and run your offense. But you know what? A lot of your big dogs came out. Paul Dino comes in. Duren's in there as well, though. Flora's in there. Also in the ball game, Matt Morris. He's going to go to the top of the string. Cavalier, your quarterback. 546 and counting in the ball game. 42-14. Wildcats with the ball in the lead down at the 32-yard line of the Trailblazers. Turn around, give it to Dern. Just run a regular old play. That's all they did. Yep. And he just kind of juked and jived and got himself inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. There was nothing fancy. There was nothing rubbing salt in a wound there. It was just a nice run play. 16 carries, 81 yards for Mike tonight. Uh, he's been the workhorse for our battle west on the ground, but for a little guy there, you saw him again breaking tackles and uh, running hard. Another first down for the Cats. See, and there's a part of me that would like to see Pyatt go to CSU. Uh, just so you could see, you Cut know, the next three years, <laughs> come up to Pyatt, because that, that was one sure. heck of a combination. High formation set. Sims is your tailback, gets the football. Follows Zach into the hole. Nice cutback. Still on his feet. Down inside the 11-yard line. Sims has really played well tonight as well. Seven carries, 54 yards. We're inside the five-minute mark, Eric, and you know, uh, I think we can probably put this one to rest. Yeah, I think this one's over. That's why we're going to start talking about other things. Once, <laughs> once the commentators start talking about stuff not really related to the game, then you know it's over. It's like on TV when they roll the credits. Well, the don't Irv and Joe do that all the time? Well, their show's <laughs> over at about 2.30. Oh, oh two and go, don't go fun. there. <laughs> <laughs> Into the ball game. <laughs> Is Gallegos. Gallegos into the game for the first time. Lower end of your screen. At the top is Morris. Turn around. Give it to Sims again. Flags fly. Sims is just drilled at the line of scrimmage. I mean, he was hit so hard that his body kind of went into a convulsion there for a second by Jordan Lucero. 
My question is, does A-West's biggest fan, Joe Williams, get a, does he get like a complimentary copies of these tapes? Oh, I hope Finds so. Finds them in his bookcase at home? I hope so. <laughs> That's a, well, hey, I even have a Arvada West State Championship sweatshirt. Now. There you go. I mean, you, you can't be part of the play-by-play -play team for the Arvada West Wildcat Television Network and not be taken care of by the big folks. When I talked to Dave uh, up at Bronco Camp and he, uh, you know, alerted me to this possibility of doing these games, I think it was Scott who said something like, so, uh, Dave, if you're fortunate enough to win another uh, state title, is Eric going to get a ring? <laughs> well, all I know <laughs> is I better get a ring. <laughs> Craig head at the top of the screen, Pied at the lower end. First, first time in the ball game tonight is John Degner. Degner with the fullback position, and he runs it straight up the middle, picks up a quick four, and that is a good question. <laughs> and you know what? I hope he listens to this thing <laughs> because we will ask for one. <laughs> Heck yeah, we will. Uh, you know, I've seen the Bronco rings, and it's a it, it's a sweet looking ring. It really is. Uh, it's the most gaudy looking thing yeah. I've ever seen, and uh, I wouldn't have turned one down had they been fortunate. Enough, uh, I've been fortunate enough for them to want to give the broadcast team, you know, crew one. But uh, we'll leave it at that. But Quite Dave warm. knows Dave knows how that feels, and he put together a beautiful ring last year, and I would like that repeat ring. Paul Dino goes in motion from left to right on your screen. Turn around, give it to Sims. Sims with a little cutback. Ten, five, drill, touchdown. That was all effort. That was just straight out Sims effort. And you know what it is? It's a young man that doesn't get a lot of opportunities to score, and he just won his Super Bowl. He's dancing around out there. I mean, he is one happy young man. You know, you, you talk a lot about the Durans and the Pyatts and the Craigheads, but Arvada West has a lot of depth, hey. especially at the skill positions. So we haven't called Micah Paldino's name yet, but he's a guy who can make big plays for you. Chad Jones, their backup running back, I don't know where he's been tonight. He must be injured or sick because he's not playing. So what do they do? They bring in Sims, nine carries, 70 yards. Oh, look at this. Paldino couldn't get the ball down. Or excuse, yeah, it was Paul Dino couldn't get it down. The snap was high. He rolls out, throws the ball into the end zone, exactly. gets one to Zach, and Zach scores two points. Uh, you know, you hope that Tony Manfredi and company don't look like, you know, look at that as running it up. That was a broken play, clear as day. Mm -hmm. And the young man just heads up, drills it into the fullback. He gets another two points, and we have a 50-14 ball game. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just picking this game up because someone started the tape a little late for you, <laughs> 50 unanswered points. Yeah. That's half amazing. a century here. Well, you know, uh, in USA Today, they have those uh, top 25 national rankings. And coming in this week, Arvada West ranks 24th in the nation. Venture to guess, it's probably safe to say that uh, their performance tonight is doing nothing to hurt that ranking. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is an Oberlin team who, despite their 2-2 two and two record, a uh, pretty gritty, tough team. Last week, they only lost to Cherry Creek 13-7. to seven. Cherry Creek's week, fifth in the state in 5A. Here are about a West Ball behind 14 to nothing. Everything's going against them. Then, bang, 50 unanswered points. Uh, it's starting to rain pretty hard out here as the foot goes into the ball, into the end sort zone. Sort of symbolic you're an Overland fan. I mean, it is just pouring right now. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, uh, when you get the snot knocked out of you, uh, you know, because I watched Cherry Creek do that to Bear Creek. Yeah. And for Overland to hold Cherry Creek to 13 points, and if you're Arvada West, you sit there and you think about that because Bear Creek, once again, considered in the preseason polls a pretty darn good football team and their number one rival. And all of a sudden, they get beat handedly at Jefferson County by Cherry Creek. So you think, okay, Cherry Creek's back. Right. Cherry Creek comes into here, and Overland's defense, ranked in the top five in the state, they sit down and shut them up, to, you know, shut them down to 13 points on their home field. Tonight, as we discussed, we anticipated strength against strength, and right now, 50 points by this offense over this powerful defense. What more do you got to say? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's definitely a state. Let's oh, put it that way. Oh. And I've told Coach Logan that quite a few times as Cavalier. He said, one of the greatest things that I, I get an opportunity to witness is when high school young men who, who aren't necessarily into affection, 
<laughs> I mean, the polite way of putting that. You know, one of the, oh, what a what hit. A hit. What a, just a flat out stick that time. Jason Higby just nails the tailback. But but one of the most impressive things I ever saw was uh, after Arvada West a couple years back knocks off Centaurus in the semifinals and, and Cutlip comes out and Coach Logan goes to shake his hand and kind of knocks it away and gives him a bear hug. That's what high school sports is all about. Mm -hmm. I just watched Cavalieri go up to uh, Coach Logan down there going to shake his hand and kind of puts his arm around him as well. Uh, high school boys, or gentlemen I should say, don't necessarily show that kind of affection, at least to grown men. Sure. It's kind of cool to see that kind of relationship between coach and players at this level. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. We're coming down to the final two minutes here. Well, I mean, it's, there's no secret. I mean, with all the success Dave has had, whether it was in his playing career, his coaching career, his broadcasting career, you got to be a people person. You need to know how to handle, manage uh, oh, yeah. people. And, um, you know, it's that emotion probably comes mostly just out of respect. You know, he's got these kids respect. And in this day and age, with the young people, you know, that's not just a given anymore. You know, maybe 20, 30 years oh, ago, that was a given. Hey, Coach was an authority figure. But anymore, I mean, you can look all up and down college and high school athletics of teams, you know, having a mutiny with their coach or whatever. But uh, you're not seeing that here. And it's, it's just uh, it's mutual respect. Oh, I think Dave cool. respects the players, and they respect him. And, you know, that, that's where that special relationship there, probably gets created. There's absolutely no doubt about it as the clock ticks down to the one-minute mark, 50-14. Wildcats with the lead, ball on the overland side of the field, and they have the football with a third down and four. I've known Logues for about 15 years now, and I tell you what, the guy takes this serious, and for people that, you know, would ever question that, I can guarantee you he takes this role very, very serious and understands that, uh, you know, in this day and age, role models are a hard thing to find. Absolutely. And, and I honestly consider him a pretty darn good one. And now that this love fest is over, we're going to count down the final 54 seconds of this ball game and, and continue to salute the undefeated Arvada West Wildcats. Not only are they defending state champions, they're 5-0, and a convincing 5-0, and and uh, getting ready to get into league play. And, and I tell you, it's, it's pretty impressive what they've been able to do here at the Stutler Bowl tonight. Absolutely. I mean, and it not only is the final score impressive, it's very impressive when you see how they got there. We've mentioned it before. They Ball fell down. behind 14 nothing. They scored 50 unanswered points. And the backup's not uh, good either. They're laying some big helmets out there. You see the turnover created there. And, uh, I mean, it's just been a, after the first quarter, it's been a very impressive three quarters of football for about a while. No doubt about it. Look at this. And as every one of these reserves come off the field, the first unit defense comes out congratulating every one of them. It's a total team effort here. 49 seconds left, 50-14. Wildcats with the ball and the lead. The ball resting firmly at their 45. This has to be just a kneel-down situation and get out of here because I'm going to tell you right now, Dave Logan and Coach Manfredi are very close. Uh, the one thing he will not do is, is you know, try to embarrass anybody. Uh, and Tony does a hell of a job over there on that uh, that side of the, or that sideline as well for the Overland Trailblazers and uh, you know he comes out of a very very difficult Centennial League and and it kind of lets you know what you know Jefferson County's been able to do with uh, Arvada West this year beating Mullen and beating Overland you know I'd like to see these guys team up against Cherry Creek and see what happens too yeah that that, that would be a fun game to watch absolutely well there can be some fun games coming our Ray way as well would be a good one too. yes it would but you wait I mean Columbine's a pretty darn good ball club Arvada, Arvada is okay they um, on the schedule. yes they do uh, but that's going to do it as Coach Logan goes out to the middle of the field. He's going to grab T Tony Manfredi, shake that hand, talk to each other, and, and see what's going on, shake hands with all the coaches. The final score here tonight, 50-14. to 14. You can watch these kids line up, shake some hands. This will not be like Mullen. I mean, these guys are uh, they respect each other very much. There's going to be a lot of handshaking going on. And, and once again, Eric, it's been a, a wonderful time working with you. Another fun night of watching high school football. Best ticket in town. No doubt about it. Well, we're going to see you next time as we bring you yet another Arvada West matchup here on the Arvada West Wildcat Network. For my partner, once again, Eric Christensen, I'm Don Martin. See you next time. The final score here tonight from the Stutler Bowl, 50-14. to 14, A convincing victory by the number one ranked team in the state of Colorado, the Arvada West Wildcats.
and that didn't just end with the starters. It went all the way down. This is one heck of a football team. Talk to you next time.